We're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I feel like we just had a whole episode. <laughs> we did. We <laughs> did. Kind of um, a personal episode. When yeah, not we to had be aired. To, yeah, <laughs> so we had to we had to clear some air on some mm. things real quick. Mm-hmm. Kind of have a heart to heart. Um, but. Round of applause for Teach. He's thank you, me. thank you, thank you. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, shit. For real. That's all I heard. All, all <laughs> day. Right? Wasn't wedding. everyone's theme like it's fucking finally time? I got About married. time, Mister <laughs> and Mrs. Teach got married. Or that and the story when I first met Teach, oh I didn't god. like him. Oh I was my like, god! Yeah. I was like, or how many people are going to throw this in his face? Like, your father-in-law didn't like you at first. Oh my- <laughs> okay, so it all started <laughs> with the officiant. My officiant. I was Wasn't like... Wasn't that awkward? I was like... That was so... I was like, oh my god. So at my wedding, <laughs> my this is... The officiant at my wedding was my teacher um, at, at my, line- my Buddhist lineage center <coughs> and it's so funny because i've known her for years you know and uh it's we had been meeting up with her sporadically kind of going over how we want the ceremony to go and we finally came up with what all we're okay with right because mm-hmm. it gets even more in depth if you let it but we were like yeah it's a little too out there let's keep it like this and she goes okay so we had a whole outline she emailed it to both of us and was like okay i'm gonna do my little speech i'm gonna introduce everyone and then we're gonna get into the rich the ceremony and then you'll do this you'll do this you'll do this you'll do this well her speech i didn't get a snippet of right mm. they were just speech and the first i mean one of the first things she said was like you'll never see my daughter again that was my father-in-law had messaged me when i first met mrs teach that i would never see her again called me left a message um, you know, and they, it was the first year it was all about them not wanting us to be together. We had literally only told her that like the last, the week before when we met, like when we were just kind of, we kind of went over everything. <laughs> yeah. We went over the whole like, ceremony. Mm, we like went that's... over the whole ceremony and, and just at the end, we're just kind of hanging out in her house and we just, it was just kind of a funny thing to go, you know, it's so awesome. We're getting married next week. You know, it all started nine years ago and can you believe, you know, how, what a struggle we went through in the beginning, how it's so different now. Ha ha ha, my father in law left me a message this one time. Or when he invited me over and all his friends were sitting and s- sat me on the like on the ground on the on the grass like, and they were on the porch looking down at us. And so my officiant tells these two stories at my wedding, which are two like black spots of our relationship of my me and my in laws, you know, that we don't they, they did not look pleased when oh they were Oh my Cause like when when she told the story about like, oh yeah, you know, saying that you're never to see my daughter again Mrs. Teach's dad was just kinda like uh, I it and was then, awkward. And her mom was just like kinda like made this face yeah, like Yeah, 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 yeah. Did she just say what I think she said? So maybe I I've been thinking about I haven't talked to my teacher yet because I actually have some of her stuff from the wedding and I need to bring it to her and I'm wondering if I want to bring it up or not because it's already done. Right. right? It's so like why you can't go it? back and But um in my head, you know, I'm sure I'm like I guess like maybe she thought it was a We funny are story so now? over it. And it is a funny story now like between two people, between right. or even a group, but like not at the wedding. Why would yeah. we talk about that? Because what if there's people that don't know that the relationship? No, they better. don't. So <laughs> many so people many did not know that. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. I think she caught herself too. So this teacher, though, you know, Buddhism, it's all about the present moment and teaching, and learning. there's no mistakes, right? There's no mistakes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Everything you can teach from. So I feel like, and when she was writing this, she probably said, "Oh, what a good thing to share with." all these people that, you know, how many, how many parents I'm sure can relate to how much they hate their daughter's boyfriend or something (laughs) or how scared they are for them to date and this, that, so she's kind of be going like, yeah, look, they had this too and look where we're at now, but it did not, it was hard to, I had that mindset to think about it like that, Uh but not a lot of people do. I got a lot of people, they were like, oh my God, that was kind of rough. It was was weird. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But it's Other like, than that, she said it, your dad so, said it. <laughs> well, my dad, I don't think really brought that up. Her dad did. Her dad had a speech. Well, I thought your dad mentioned something about it in his speech. Oh, he mentioned how like, he didn't quick. think we were going to stay together. Mm-hmm. Like, he thought when we started dating, it was like, huh, that, this is, you know, this is nice, this is cute. But didn't really think like that. That's what I remember him yeah, saying. Yeah, nine years huh. later. Like, and like, cause yeah, he stopped in the middle of it. Well, because I used to date a lot 
when I lived with him, you know. So he kind of knew my track record with that. So he really didn't think I was about it. And then her dad did say, um, yeah, he went, I think, and it's, he's a good sport. He rolled with it. Like, oh, we're all in on this. You know, this isn't right. a thing anymore. Like, which I'm glad. Because I, as soon as I saw him after the wedding, I went, oh my God, I cannot believe she said that. I go, <laughs> I did not tell her to say that. I did not think she was going to say that. Obviously, I don't obviously like hold anything from that anymore. He's like, no, 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 it's whatever. I don't care. I'm like, oh my god, thank God. Right? Yeah. Jesus Christ, I can only imagine. Cause like Leslie, cause me and Leslie talked about it after the wedding too, and I was just like, man, like that, that was such a weird thing to say. And I was like, imagine, I was like, imagine if somebody would go to like, oh yeah, like uh, when David met you know Leslie's dad, he put a gun to his face. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want people to know that. Like, that is exactly what it I was like. like. I hate that fact that it even fucking happened. You yeah, know what we I mean? both. Yeah, it's a funny story between a conversation, not a, a ceremony. It's fucking. It was like you didn't see that in front of like all my family. I was like, oh, when he met, when they but met. But also, fucking, I think it was also a thing too, because later in this, in this, in her um, welcome speech, it was. You know, in Buddhism, we teach about impermanence, too, which is everything's changing, nothing is permanent, which is, she was such like, it's kind of taboo to talk about this at a wedding, because obviously the wedding, they're going to last forever, right? That's what you talk about. But impermanence in the sense that everything's always changing, and you always can go with it, right? Mm-hmm. So she meant totally well, and we are kind of weird, <laughs> you know, my, you know, this Buddhist lineage, so... I just kind of roll with it. I don't think I'm going to bring it up to her because what are you going to do? Right. right. I mean, it was a great ceremony altogether. It was very interesting. i never been to a, she also, a ceremony like this. I so. think that was, <laughs> she was nervous because I know she doesn't do a lot of weddings, but <clears throat> you saw we're putting things on the shrine, mm-hmm. right? So she would say generosity and generosity is something, something, something. I don't remember because I was like, right, just doing it. And on the thing I got, you know, it says generosity place. It was, we had berries, place food, an offering of food for generosity. I thought she was going to say generosity, blah, blah, blah. We will, we offer food and then we go, okay, food, put the food up. And then people know what we're doing. Discipline, blah, 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 blah. We offer incense. And then she totally didn't say any of that. And so me and uh, Mrs. Teach just had to like, we were like, which, which one is which? Like, I don't remember all like. The six offerings that go with those six, they're called paramitas. So we were just like picking stuff up and putting it down every time. (laughs) So they were probably all off. Like, cause even she ended and I was like, oh shit, there's still one left. So I just put it on the shrine. Like, like, whoops. I didn't know she she didn't say it. I I was like, why isn't she telling us which one it is? Like, I don't, I didn't memorize this. Shit, I was like, man, these guys really know what they're doing here. I was like, just watching, you know, from the sidelines. Actually, it wasn't as weird as I thought it was going to be. Because, I mean, other than the shrine, right, and the incense, it was pretty normal, right? Yeah, it looked like a normal sub. It just, you know, that's just what you guys did. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked that thing. It was a whoo, that giant. Oh, the gong? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. (laughs) Man, I don't know. It was was a very good time, you know, like. uh, You know how many people came up to me and said, I think I want a Buddhist wedding. (laughs) No, like, I don't want to be Buddhist, but I think I'll have a Buddhist wedding. Yeah, no, I'll do it. I'll give it a try. You yeah. Know? It was only 30 minutes. So it was, uh, <laughs> That's what they like. They're like, it was interesting. It wasn't too long. Because, like, the Christian ones are so fucking long. You're like... <sighs> and now Whoa. we'll have the mother of the groom read scripture. I remember that from my dad's like, oh, my God. Your dad's a tall motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Man, Six he was five. huge. Mm-hmm. But he was a very outgoing guy. I mean, oh, he was yeah, really, yeah, yeah. He was really... Uh, He's a talker. He... Yeah. He's really cool. I wish I got to talk to him more. Like, he just looked, like, so inviting. Like, hey, mm-hmm. bud, you want to go have a beer with me? You come on. So I've told you I have a bi- biological dad. Yeah. Right? Did yeah. you see him there? Um, was that the older gentleman? Yeah. With the mustache? Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So. Because I saw pictures on Facebook. They were, like, both of you kissing oh, on yeah, your yeah, cheek. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I saw you yeah. tagged in it, so. Yeah, that was us. Um, okay. It was so awkward. There was, okay, that was one of the drama I was a part of because we were taking pictures of the family, right? So before me and Mrs. Teach got married, it was my side of the family. So like my grandparents, my mom, my aunt, my dad, and then his name's Gilbert. He was there and the thing. And I, I mean, I was, I haven't seen him since I was like, I mean, I've seen him a little bit, but he, had, I've been adopted since I was like eight and I knew my dad since I was two. So my mom looks at me and goes, I teach, you're not going to ask Gilbert to come be in the picture. And I was like, no, why? I don't know him. Like, I don't know him. Like, I was eight probably last time I, like, really thought of him as, like, my dad. And 
He came by when I was 18, but it had already been 10 years, right? Right. I went, no, why would I have this guy in my wedding pictures? Like, I don't fucking know him. I would look at this and be like, who is this guy? Like, you know, like, why did I take a picture with him? And she's like, oh, she's telling the photographer, like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. And I'm like, I looked at the photographer and go, no. And she goes, no, I, you're paying me. I'm listening to you. So I was like, good. And my grandmother, too, she's like, ay, mijo, he came all this way. I go, he didn't have to. He got invited. That was the nice thing I did. Like, right. I didn't have to invite him either. I kind of didn't want to. Mrs. Teach wanted to for whatever reason. So I did. But I'm like, the fuck you telling me? You to put him in my pictures, right? Yeah, I was like, no. That's like... weird, isn't it? Like, wh- he's my dad because he came with my mom. Like, he didn't fucking, <laughs> like, that's the only claim he has to it. It's not like I know the guy. Still smash, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he can call that all he wants, but he's not going to be in my wedding picture. <laughs> that's that's my fear, because um, cause we went to y'all's wedding this past Saturday um, mm-hmm. at the time of recording this. Um, and then well, the week before that, we went to Eric and Chanel's wedding. Congrats to Eric and Chanel. Congrats, Mr. Congrats. This is a ghost Um And so me and Leslie have really gotten, or mostly Leslie, and she yeah. did, she's denying it. She, she's getting gung-ho yeah. about booking a wedding and this, this and that and I've talked to I've talked to um Eric and Chanel about it <coughs> you know about their wedding and they were kind of giving me the insight on everything because I mean I have no idea I've never been married before you know like a lot of newlyweds all everything is new to them and you know of course everybody knows it's going to be a costly expense and everything like that so they were kind of giving me some insight on it and so yeah you know i'm starting to looking at things i'm starting to look at tuxes and mm-hmm. i was doing that today i was on the not.com you know you know it was a bitch that tux was 130 bucks wasn't it yeah it was yeah it was like it's 130 it's like 99.99 on the brochure but then it's there's a 10 dollar looking at it fee and a 10 dollar walking in the door fee and they charge you for looking. damages before you even yeah put uh-huh. the fucking thing on uh-huh. and i was like what the hell so my tux was sweaty as fuck my shoes are muddy as fuck and i threw it all in the bag i didn't put it on the hanger and get it back up <laughs> <laughs> my pants broke. Oh, really? My pants... Oh, well, fucking... you already paid for the damages, so you're good. Yeah, so that's why I was like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And so you couldn't really tell, but, like, I got ready and everything, and I was like, okay, you know, so when, you know, in my apartment, and I get in the car to sit down, I just hear, <gasps> and I was like... It, w- it was the band? It was, no, it was, like, the clasp thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how, like, the, the clasp to move it, it's on, like, that little rail type mm-hmm. thing, kind of mm-hmm. like a zipper-looking thing? So the the zipper looking thing and the little clasp of the thing it came off. Uh, so off the track or the whole clasp came off. The whole clasp oh, came off. That sucks. And the thing came off of the track. So I was kind of like, what the hell? So it was really secure on my left side, but my right side <laughs> kept falling. Yeah. And I was like, oh no! So that's why I kept my jacket on the whole night uh. <clears throat> because like if I take off my jacket, <laughs> my shirt kept coming up. Bless you. Um, my shirt kept coming out of my pants and it just looked really stupid, but the jacket was long enough to hide everything. And I was just like, fuck <clears throat> me. And I, I was sweating profusely. Well, I'll tell you what, my vest and my shirt were way bigger than I am and bigger than my blade, you know, whatever the top is called for a tux. And my pants are too big, which is better than too small. So that's why I didn't really fuss about it but my whole outfit was coming off me like my pants were falling on constantly even at the, I saw you at picking the them ceremony up during, yeah. like I was trying to pull up my pants because they were just sliding off and I had them at the tightest clasp thing and then my shirt was so big and my vest was so big that it would get like moved where you couldn't even see it or like pushed up like that because there was so much excess uh-huh. like, it was a shit show but I'm like they're rented it was just for pictures. Can't, they look fine in the pictures. Yeah, no, so yeah. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. Freaking, um, and you know, because the Friday <coughs> night, the Friday night before Teach's wedding, we we were all over here at his apartment, and we all got fucked up. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. That was a brutal night. I I got drunker than I thought I was I was worried I wasn't going to be able to drink at the wedding, because I was so sick that morning. Oh, yeah. All day, like, before, like, when I got to the wedding, I was still like, I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the that, that Saturday morning was the mm. first time I threw up in two years from drinking <laughs> the last party that we had in my house yeah. two years ago yeah, was yeah, the yeah. last time that morning after was uh-huh. the last time i ever threw up uh-huh. from drinking so i was kind of like what the fuck and so it was funny because all the groomsmen were all fucking well most of the groomsmen were like oh fuck like yeah, yeah. i don't know if i want to drink tonight yeah um so yeah but we were here and i was talking about my tux because i never worn a tux or a fancy suit before so the guys were kind of busting my balls about it and this this and that and 
I was talking about how... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking no, about not how, the guys. The one guy. The one guy, yeah, true. Sorry. You don't know how to wear a fucking tux? And I was and like... The, no. my, and, okay. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, see, pushes my buttons every fucking time. The fucking bow tie? Who ties their own bow ties? Do you hear him talk about that? Oh, mm-hmm. you weren't there. It was before at um the rehearsal dinner, the day before. He made, like, his wife was telling me that... So, you know, it's a class bow tie. Everyone does that because they're supposed to be short, you know, small. Yeah. He, for his wedding, had, like, one he actually handed. Or, and they're, like, this big, though, because they have to be. There's so much material. He made a big old deal at the store in Dallas about me choosing that. Like, he was like... Oh, really? He was like, why are you giving me this bow tie? Where's the... And they were like, this is what it comes with. He's like, uh, not, it's not hand roll. What are you talking about? Like, what is this? Give me a... And she was like... I'm going to give you this one because that's what's on the thing. Like, that's what he, I chose. Mm-hmm. And he made a big old deal about it. Sorry, I took your story. Go no, ahead. you're fine. You're so, fine. <laughs> Adam was giving you shit. His name's Adam. He's my cousin. Yeah, like, he was giving you shit about not wearing tugs before. Yeah, because I was just like, because, yeah, they told me to wear the pants up here. Right. And you were like, no, you don't got to wear them up there. And he, yeah. was like, he was like, yeah, he did. He's like, that's if that's the way they told him he has to wear it, that's the way. I was just kind of oh like, God. uh... I was like, okay. And so I when I put it on, and I think that's what fucked me up, because I was wearing it to my oh. stomach, so when I sat down, <sighs> like, the pressure... Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause, like, I Did you get it sized for your, uh, to that waist or to your... That's that's how they measured me. To your belly button? Yeah. Okay, then you should have... Yeah, so it should have been that... Like, that yeah, that but I... I yeah. yeah a lot of, like, I don't know. And I tried it on, you know, the that Wednesday, mm-hmm. because I paid for it Thursday because I was a payday. Yeah. Um... And Wednesday, me and everything, because I wore it and I walked, he, the guy had me walk around the store just to make sure it, you know, felt comfy. And I was like, oh yeah, this feels really good. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for it. And it's a snap, but yeah, my fucking pants broke. And <laughs> and because yeah, I saw you guys started posting pictures on Facebook and everything like that. And I was looking at my pants. I was like, do my pants look baggy? Do they look yeah. like they're sagging? But no, yeah. they look great. So I was yeah. kind of like, yes. But, my uh, pants look baggy too, but he, I'm a big guy, so you can't really tell. And they're <laughs> black, so but they were felt like parachute pants. But I was like, eh, I'd better rather that than it's like uh, tight, right? right. And, then so, all, uh, and then he can't eat. Poor Mrs. T. She had like three things of like girdle like, like, on, like, like a corset. When we were sitting down at the table, she's like, I can't fucking breathe. I was like, Yeah, that sucks. You need to change. Right. No, oh, she did change. She eventually. did change. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So that's really cool. So now that it's all over, you know, what are your thoughts? Has anything changed between you and Mrs. Teach, you know, being married? We, you know, it has very much rekindled a lot of like, you know, it kind of feels like we're dating again. A little Aww, bit. You know what I mean? Good. Even the day or so before we were so tense and kind of like, we were very like, shut up, leave me alone. <laughs> I got to get this done. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> why are you talking to me about? It? I got to get this done. So like, right. Um, Cause you've been there so long, you just kind of tit for tat. And now it's like. You know, just like, oh, I really want some. Oh, what do you want? I'll go get it. Hold on. Like, you want it, like, you want really hot? Or like, not that hot. I know you don't like it that hot, right? So, like, okay, I got it. I'll make it. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like, it's funny though, because we can definitely see that though. We're both kind of like, it's because we're married now. Like, well, that's know? good. That's yeah, really yeah, good yeah. that you feel that way. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. It's good. Um, it's nice. One of, the, one of the nicest moments, I've never been a groomsman before. Um, granted, I'm only 23. I don't have a lot of married friends yeah. at this point. Um, 26 I is when you start <laughs> right. while everyone starts getting married yeah. right freaking uh, cause yeah cause in a couple weeks I'm um, going to Laredo for another wedding um, god damn yeah so back to back um, and then so okay real quick guys you guys gotta stop planning your fucking weddings on shit that I wanna watch. <laughs> hey, were you going to go to all this shit all the time? You have every weekend's book for you. You got fucking, between bands and wrestling and everything. I mean, your whole fucking, year is set up. Well, you know, and that's that's what everybody assumes, but I buy shit months in advance. Yeah. So, granted, so I'll let you and Eric and Chanel's wedding slide for Metallica because you guys had planned the wedding before they announced the lineup. Yeah, that's true. So it's kind of like okay, and then it was a matter of waiting for the day-to-day <laughs> lineup to come out. And then so Metallica was on the Saturdays and I was like, "Motherfuckers." Mm. Um, so then, Haven't you seen it before? Nope. Oh. I've never seen Metallica. That's right. That's the only band and I say once I see Metallica, I will retire from concerts. Shut the fuck up. I'm, I, I will. I will see everyone that I need to see. Mm. I've seen Iron Maiden four times. I've you seen saw Slayer. Guns N' Roses, right? No. I don't really care for Guns N' Roses. Mm. They're not all that. Mm. Um, so I say, whenever I see Metallica is when I'm retiring from concerts. I've seen everyone who I need to see. I've seen farewell tours. I am good to go. Um, 
And then, so, so we this, had to fuck it. See, we wanted you to continue your love of concerts. Yeah. That's oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. Thank thank you. Thank you. Internally, the him and Mrs. Teacher were like we have to do this for David. It really is for your own good. It's for what? Yeah. We need him to experience venues. Yeah. Um. In ten years, when they come back, we're gonna do our our <laughs> fucking uh, vows years, again. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, oh. We're gonna do our vows. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um. So yeah. So then the wedding I'm going to in a couple weeks. Cause we're going down, we're going, we're driving to Laredo on Friday. That Friday is WWE Crown Jewel live from Saudi Arabia, which that's crazy. Mm. Um, with all the news going on with Saudi Arabia, but then it's in the middle of the day, and we're gonna be driving and doing wedding things in the middle of the day, mm. and then I won't have time all weekend. Who's getting married in Laredo? Uh, Jesus and Ana. Uh, you met them at my birthday last year. Are they from Laredo? They're from Laredo. Yes. Both of them. Both of them. Yeah. Why would they want to go back? No, just <laughs> like, that's what they really want to do. That's what they want to Stay do. Stay here. It's safe. Safer. <laughs> Safer. Right? Um, yeah, but no. So, I mean, I guess just the fall, late yeah. summer, early fall is just you know the time why? It's our area. None of us want to get... You don't want to get... I was... I mean, maybe I talked about this on the podcast, but I was thinking, you know, me and Teach were... Me and Teach. Me and Mrs. Teach. <laughs> um, we're thinking, like, why the fuck do we do it this day? Because we're right in the middle of, like... You know, she has star testing. I'm in the middle of class. You know, the next day on my way, I had to take a midterm and prepare for an <laughs> observation a lesson plan I did on Monday, which just, I mean, the whole day was taken, right? Mm-hmm. Right after the wedding. And I'm, we're like, oh my God, why would we put it right in the middle? But we thought, oh yeah, we didn't want to do it in December and or November because of Thanksgiving and um, Christmas. Oh, you know, sweet. everyone's already planned their shit for that, right? People are going to be out of town or in town, they have family, blah, blah, blah can't do in the spring and the summer it's too fucking hot like you cannot you have to find a really big place to have a big ceremony inside which you know our the place we picked was cheaper because they have that outside venue mm-hmm. inside way more expensive so we picked this time because the weather i think that's why everyone down here is doing it right now because it's the cooler time yeah. of year especially if it's a spring wedding <coughs> fuck that my yeah. allergies are too bad yeah. in the spring you're fucking. crying for a whole nother reason <laughs> it's like i'd be like oh my god um so yeah, but I mean, I'm very excited. It's very interesting, kind of like to really pay attention. Um, I gotta say, my favorite moment from from y'all's wedding um, is gonna be because they they were doing it all cutesy. No, you can't go in. You can't go in there. You can't look at the girls and this, this and that. And this. So you know, Teach had you know his best man. And, you know, a couple of the other groomsmen kind of helping him out here and there, doing things. Um, mostly the best man. Hats off yeah. to yeah. him. He was a uh, personal teacher's personal assistant he that really day. Was. Um, My drink bearer <laughs> for real. <laughs> um, so then you know, of course the the groomsmen have to go back over to this behind this little area to line up with the bridesmaids because we're walking them mm-hmm. and everything like that, or they're walking us. However you want to look at it, equality. Um, and so when I got back there, I saw Mrs. Teach and I saw her in the dress and everything. And I was just like, oh, wow. You know, like I kind of was like, she's in the dress. This is so perfect. (laughs) OMG. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God. You know, so I line up and everything, you know, when they all come out, you know, we all come out, we go to our respective areas where we stand. Um, and so finally, you know, here comes bride comes on, Mrs. Cheese walks in and I kind of saw you, uh, maybe I was overthinking it. Maybe you were actually doing it, but you were kind of like, kind of had your eyes closed a little bit. You're looking down. You didn't want to see her until she got yeah, yeah, to yeah. the actual aisle to walk down. Yeah. And as soon as you looked and saw her, like you got all, you looked, got all quivery and roll. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, just... <laughs> no it actually, and half, it was looking down was half, um, as soon as the music started, even when y'all were walking down, I was getting emotional. I looked at my uh, officiator, I kind of, and I was like, "I'm gonna fucking cry." <laughs> she was like, "Me too," and and I wanted to wait till she actually, you know, was down the aisle. But I've seen those videos where like the fucking groomsmen are just bawling. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I do not oh, want the groom to do that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Like. But it's really hard not to get, you know... Once you finally see them. Yeah, really. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and I joke around, because Leslie, Leslie <laughs> said that, because it's some stupid Facebook post, I shouldn't say Leslie said it, because she's not the creator of it, where it's like, if my groom, if the groom doesn't cry when I walk down the aisle, I'm going back until he does. Oh, or, like, I'm redoing everything. Yeah. So I'm just like, man, whatever. So, because I'm not the the mm. most emotional person mm. for the for the common sense things, I should say. Um, it's really weird things that make me cry. Um, so it's just like, and I tell myself, I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to be very happy, you know, but 
at the same time, it's like I can't predict how I'm going to be no, on my wedding day. Yeah, yeah it's just you know, like not this like emotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, I've seen those posts where the groom is just like, yeah. <laughs> Well, I see the ones with, like, ugly crying. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, I gotta... Yeah. No, you... I, yeah. I, I, granted, I just saw, like, you make a face. Like, yeah. like all, oh, like, oh, he's really yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. This and that. And I, was kind of, and I was watching you. And then, like, watching back and forth. And I was just like... Oh, and then I got a little teary-eyed. Yeah. Because, like, oh, this is really a nice moment. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? It really was. And finally, all the groomsmen stopped talking shit to each other for a nice five minutes. <laughs> just so we could watch the fucking... Bride yeah, walk, yeah, yeah, we were funny. Oh yeah, it was a great uh, cast of hooligans. <laughs> yeah, it really was. I couldn't ask for a better group of assholes to stand by me. For honestly. real, and yeah. assholes they were. Yeah, oh yeah. I was like, as soon as I walked in, it was just like <laughs> nonstop roasting from your cousin. And I was yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god! Imagine living with the guy. Um, <laughs> with the guy. Or you know, growing up with them. Yeah. So. It was great. I'm glad it's over, though. Right. I'm so glad it's just over. Like No more planning. No, no more, more stress. Yeah. And it's funny because um, my friend Destiny, uh, you know, she wasn't the uh, maid of honor, but she really did pretty much do all the maid of honor duties because she's in town. Because the maid of honor lives in Germany. But um, <clears throat> she texted Miss Teach the other night and was like, it's weird not texting you all week about wedding stuff. She's like, I miss you. <laughs> like, you know, it's kind of weird that it's, it's over now. Right. I'm like, it's fucking great. Yeah, she came up to me when I was at the bar because I had two drinks the whole night. I had two, oh. two Angry Orchards, which I was like, oh, my God, this bar has Angry Orchards. Holy shit. I was like, no way. That's so rare. Um, and we bought the cheapest package, so I wouldn't have thought either. Right. They didn't charge you, right? No, it was yeah. all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, didn't, I didn't tip there you. There was so. premium that you could buy, right? So... No, I was like... I, I just, don't think the lady knew, though, because she was serving us um, Fireball and, like, Jim Beam, which yeah. is considered... Because they have wells. It's, like, Kettle One. That's what we bought, but they liked us. Yeah, so... But, so, Destiny, you Des- them? Yeah, Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one that's married to Devin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember we met them a lot at their park north, at your Park 410 okay. apartments. Um, you guys had a little barbecue or shindig or whatever, and they came, they <laughs> kind of came in as me and Leslie were leaving, mm. so it was kind of like, oh, hello, so she came up to me, and she was like, have I, have I met you before? Mm. I was like, yeah, yeah, we met a long, long, long time ago, mm. and I was like, over at, you know, their, their old house or whatever. Various old apartments here. Yeah, <laughs> and she was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I remember you, and kind of give the side hug, and I was like, yeah. you think you remember me? I was like, you, you could just say, like, you didn't have to address me at all, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, if you're going to come and be like, have I met you? Yeah, I think I met you. It's like... Yeah, yeah. that's funny. But you know, that just kind of sounds natural to me to say that, though. I think I say that, too, where I'm like, yeah, 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 I, I remember you. I think I, I remember meeting you. I don't know. But don't know. And now that you say it like that, I'm like, that does kind of sound like a dick, right? Why not just say, like, yeah, I remember. Let's just go for it. Just be like... Right? Be like, oh, hey, how you been? Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> but at the same time, I was just kind of like, why are you talking to me? I don't know you. I was just like, yeah, I was just like... Shoot, yeah. Well... Probably because she remembered you. <laughs> so, Probably. Um, man, no, what was I going to say? Um, oh, the, the food. Uh, man, it was so good. Did you like the food? I wish it, the steak would have been cooked a little bit more. So, filet mignon is cooked like that, though. Because that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Because I, cause I remember you saying filet mignon, mm-hmm. you know, when we were over here, but I was yeah. drinking. So, mm-hmm. I was like, kind of like, whatever. So, when I finally cut into it and I, you know, opened the steak, it I was, was kind of like, red. Yeah. I was like, Damn. <laughs> and I was like, but I'm fucking hungry. Yeah. Um, and I ate it. Yeah. I did have the shits when I got home. Red, did you? Red meat just destroys, uh, like when it's super uncooked, uh-huh. it just, it just destroys me. Like there, the only brown part of my steak was just the top. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was all red. So Le- Leslie couldn't eat, Leslie doesn't like red meat, but I, uh. I'll eat it cause I'm fucking hungry. Leslie like didn't eat it. Yeah. Um, and of course I gave my shrimp to the, the quiet guy that was next to me. Chris. Uh, Chris, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but, um... You don't eat shrimp? No, I don't like seafood. Mm. Remember I said that, and you are like, I don't give a fuck, it's my wedding. So you are like, yeah, 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 I got yeah, food yeah. that I wanted to right, get. Right, right, right. Um, I didn't even eat. No, but I... Yeah. Um, and then what, uh, who is the girl? Natalie? Is that her name? Uh-huh. Um, her girlfriend, I'm assuming that was her girlfriend. Uh-huh. The lady, okay. Uh-huh. Her steak was well done. Really? Yeah, her steak was well done. Like, it was, like, burnt to a crisp. Oh my god. And I was kind of like... Yeah, they forgot about it. And I was like... Because, I mean, the guys were like, is some steaks, like, cooked this way? Is some steaks not? Because uh, Adam's was, Adam's was like, a little bit pink. Like, his wasn't, like, super pink. You should have switched, because Adam loves 
Raw. I should have. I, yeah. I remember him talking about that yeah. um, on the wedding, or the, I call it your rehearsal, your rehearsal party. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, but I was kind of like, uh, but you I'm know, really it's such... it tasted great. It was very yeah. juicy. Like, I love the taste of it. It's just what it does to my stomach is why I just Red meat away from that. Just no, I wouldn't, her. like, like rare meat, like, yeah. if it's not cooked. The first time I ever had it was at Texas Roadhouse for Leslie's birthday uh-huh. earlier this year. And, um... And I, cause I, I usually always get well done, but I started going to medium well, where it has a little bit of pink, like a slight hint of mm-hmm, pink. Mm-hmm. Um, and my one buddy, he, he was eating his, um, uh, medium and I was kind of, or not, not medium. He was medium rare. He was eating medium mm-hmm. rare. And so he was like, David, you got it. You got to put some so look, pink into that. You always, so filet mignon is, a, it's the cut of the meat. Right. And they cook it like in a big thing like this, right? It's like a big, it's a tenderloin or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm probably using the wrong words. No, you're good. But you can't, it, you can't cook, the, it'll dry out really quick. So that's why they keep it like that. So it's fully cooked. It's just that it, the center is always really, really red. Yeah. So my, mm-hmm. my steak was red, like all the way to the top, like to the edges. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay. Yeah. But I still ate it. Like I wasn't a bitch. Like I, like it tasted delicious. There's nothing like, Did, wrong um, with the taste. Natalie's girlfriend, was she okay with it being... She was okay with it. She said, she was like, oh yeah, I prefer you know, my steak this way anyway. Oh, okay. It's Natalie who likes it really weird then. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, okay. So know. I didn't... It's the food, right? It just sucks with waiting food. You just can't win. Um, you know, when we had it too, it was a little different. Um, you know, because they only cooked one. So they put a lot of effort in that one whatever. <coughs> <coughs> and obviously making like 120 of them things were getting not as cooked to more cooked to forgotten yeah, about. Yeah, it I makes guess. sense, yeah. Um and like the green beans and the and the baked potato whatever, twice baked potato. Oh, that they was didn't delicious. even they didn't, we didn't even try that. And then we I remember us saying like, why didn't we get to try that because we don't know what's going to But we figured it was going to be canned green beans, which it was. And then you just put them salt in it, right? Um, and then the twice baked potato, you can't go wrong with that, right? <laughs> like if anything with cheese and bacon on top can't be like the worst thing. Yeah, so. I, I ate the I ate the shit out of that twice baked potato. <laughs> um, I did not touch the green beans whatsoever. Oh, well, you know, um, like, yeah, I was yeah. like the shrimp. Um, oh, that was another thing. Leslie was like, "Oh, you didn't give me your shrimp," but I thought she was making a sexual <laughs> joke. Um, because because she was like, "Oh, you can give me your shrimp," and I was just like, "It's not a shrimp," you know. And I was just like, "Whatever," but no, she was legit saying like, "Damn it, you didn't give me your shrimp," and I was like. Can you quit quality of shrimp? I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, ha, 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 very funny. And she was like, no, your food. I was starving. <laughs> and I was like, oh. oh my God. I was like, sorry, I gave my shrimp. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, I gave the shrimp to the guy next to me. <laughs> Can you quit quality of shrimp? I was like, God damn, I know it's small, but shit, you don't got to remind me. <laughs> oh my god that's so funny that's really funny I there's like shrimp on your plate like how did you make that connection <laughs> okay okay yeah <laughs> cause you know like, she makes innuendos like that and I was just like that's hilarious that is so funny like cause she was all like oh you didn't give me your shrimp and all that can we call you a shrimp <laughs> god damn it that's hilarious <laughs> so Mrs. Teach's uh <coughs> Maid of honor. She oh, was, she she uh she had to order a favor. They come oh drop my, off food. She was so pissy about that. Like, uh, oh, I was she, wondering about that. She was so mad, at, like us. Like she couldn't believe that we did not take like do like a vegetarian extra, or special something. measures for her to fucking eat there. And it was like, yeah, it's not about you tonight. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> right. Like you can just not eat, like <laughs> or whatever. Eat the green beans. Um. That that girl is, <laughs> is she's insane, dude. She's fucking insane. I I keep telling Miss Teach Show, I'm like, quit talking to her. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know why you hang out with this girl. I mean, she lives in Germany, right? So when when Mrs. Teach first came here to Korea, this was like her first friend, and so they just always had this bond together. But she's just a shit person. Like she's <laughs> she's she plays like really really sweet, and she has like this valley girl kind of like persona where she's just like. Oh my god, mom, like, she'll do anything for you. But at the same time, she, it, like, comes with, like, you know, why well, did this, now you need to do this, too. Oh, like, you know okay. what I mean? Like, you owe me. Right. And she just, she thinks the world fucking owes her something and revolves around her or something. Because anything, even, like, so the day, the wedding, 
Mrs. Teach, uh, her makeup was like an hour and a half late, the lady to do it. Mm. Like, she went to the salon. They refunded everything. It was like $250. They oh, were Because wow. they were that late. She was just, she was so embarrassed. Which worked out in the end. But Mrs. Teach was freaking out, right? Because they were like an hour and a half late. So she's going crazy, and this girl, she's doing her makeup. So Destiny was like, Destiny was kind of pitching in with, or like helping out with the uh, makeup artist? Yeah. Um, and uh, so she's telling Karina, like, the, the bridesmaid, hey, I think Mrs. Teach is like, really? You know, what are we going to, and, and the, girl, the girl goes, oh, I don't know, I'm doing my hair. I turned that text off. It was blowing, she was texting too much, like, mm. to the group. She's like, I turned it off. It's no, like, what yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. bridesmaid does that? I'm doing my hair. I don't want to deal with... The bride needs fucking help. Like, isn't that insane? That's and fucking insane. So the way the way that I see it, putting a pin in your story real quick, the, the way that I see it, the groomsmen and the bridesmaid should be at the whim yeah. of their respective party. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if one thing, like, like the way you're, um, you're, <laughs> you're a maid of honor, the way your <laughs> groomsmen, <laughs> <that shirt. laughs> the way your groomsmen was like, hey, I'm doing this, hey, I'm doing this. Yeah. Do you, and like the way he was offering, do you need me to go talk, like with the whole DJ guy setting yes. up stuff, do you need me to go talk to him real quick? Do you want yes. me to tell him to unpack it? Like, right? do, you want me to, do you want me to tell him this? Like, do you need anything? Do you need a Red Bull? When he made a joke about a Red Bull walk, and he goes, do you want some? Right. <laughs> he was yeah. like, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the whim. And then, yeah, you know, in the Even way, throughout the night, he would come and go, what do you need? You need something? What do you need? And I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, and that's it. it, it Cause mm-hmm. when I, when I have my groomsmen, mm-hmm. you know, and whenever, you know, when I select my best man or what well, selected my best man, you know, but so if you're listening, Jay frenzy, um, <laughs> you know, up. I was like, take notes, pal. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I, not that I always like say like, I'm demanding you do this, this and this, it, but it's kind of like, I'm that's, just, that's, that's, that's that, kind of yeah. what comes with being the best man yes. and being the maid of honor, you know, where you're kind of like, Hey, I am here. I don't, you, you can snap. I, at I me. trust you. Like, that's why you're here. It's like, this is your day. What can I do for you to make sure this day goes smooth? Right. You know, and not saying like, it's an excuse to be a bright Zillow, which I'm pretty sure Mrs. Teach was not, you know, mm-hmm. like, you Those know, last like, couple days kind of, thing. but it's like, you know, like if you get, cause you get tensed up, like it's mm-hmm. your wedding. Like it's like, Holy shit. Like this is happening. You got to, worry about everything the guests the food the the party all that stuff going right so they're they're kind of that person to be there you know for help and everything Mm -hmm. um so that's what's just kind of like i think as is anticipated of being a groomsman and especially the best man maid of honor maid of honor for sure yeah if not the best man's even you know third or fourth to the maid of honor being that especially yeah when you put it in a line like that so i'm kind of surprised you're like I was doing my hair. I am. That was only one of the things. And like, even when she picked her up, every time Mrs. Teach hangs out with this girl, it only happens like every three years or so, right? Because mm-hmm. the girl, she was in the military, and her parents were, were all military brats, but her parents are like really high up, so they were always like, in blah 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 blah. So it was like every three years, but you know, you would talk in the like in a year or so. Oh, she's my best friend. I love that girl. Oh my god, I like I will live and breathe for this girl, right? <laughs> Until she fucking comes and she's like. I can't wait for her to get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't ever want to see her again. Like, every, every, like, the ten times that she's been, Mrs. Cheech is always like, I can't do this with her. I can't take this anymore. I don't think I want to talk to her. And then the next week, she's like, oh, we're cool. And then, like, the next three years, it's like, I'm going to go pick her up. She's going to stay with us. We're going to have a great time. We're going to go out. And every fucking time, like, stop doing it, right? So even her picking her up, she picked her up the day before the wedding, right? So that was the rehearsal dinner. You know, we still had work. We still had clap, blah, blah, blah. She had to pick her up in between. She calls from the plane. like, I need Starbucks. And Miss Teach is like, there's no time. Like, I'm, I'm barely being able to pick you up so we can get here because we got to pick this up because we're going to my parents. We're going to help set up. We're going to do this. We got to go back home. I got to start making the thing. And, she, and pissed, right? She's like, well, I don't know if I'm able to help with no ca- caffeine. And so she's like, well, then, okay, you don't have to help. That's fine, right? Miss uh-huh. Teach, uh, Teach was like, whatever. And then on the way, I'm riding with them, and she, and Miss Teach is just like, man, I'm I'm so tired, like already, like it was only halfway through the day, and of course Karina's like, well, I said we should get Starbucks. I mean, I told you. We're just like, shut up, shut up, shut up, like right. Uh, I, little things like that, all you know, she was only here for three days. The vegan food, she was. The only reason she came to our table was to bitch about the vegan food during the wedding. During the reception, or the, the reception she kept coming up to tell Mrs. Teach. 
to go get like a vegan meal for her from the and so she did. Mrs. Cheech did talk to the coordinator. Was like, she's vegan, blah blah. blah. And she, the the girl was like, all there is is like the bread and the green beans. And then Karina wouldn't. She was pissed. She was all pissy face the whole time. Because I saw some other girl ordered favor for yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of like, I don't know why anyone even took care of that fucking girl. They should have let her be pissed. She could have left. I mean, for all I care. Right. <laughs> she sat in the wedding. She did her speech. She could have gone home. Like, who cares? Um, yeah. Just and then at her parents' place too. Um, She's re- I don't know. It was just she made like her mom. Her mom has Korean food, right? Right. Put away and all this stuff. We were serving barbecue and stuff and chips and whatever. And so she was like, "Oh, I don't eat that. I want Korean food." And the mom's like, "I'm. I don't have. I'm not serving Korean food." Like she had Korean. She's like, "I'm not serving Korean food." But she was like, so she was all pissy about that too. And the mom was even like, "Yeah, I'm not playing that." Like, yeah. I'm like, "Good. It's exactly what you need to do." You came to like, my house. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like I don't have any Korean food. You're gonna eat what we serve, or you don't have to. Like that's how it is. Right. Um, she made. <laughs> she stayed with my friend Destiny that last night before she went home, and she. So what do you think when someone goes, "Hey, can you take me to the gas station? I want to. I want to pick up a lottery ticket." Right. How does how would that work? The whole scenario in your head. How does that? Like, if somebody asked me to take... Like, like what if I'm like, hey, David, can we go... I want to go pick up a lottery ticket. Like, it's what? It's, uh... It's... 10, 10 or 9. When will we be back? I gotta go pick... I want to pick up a lottery ticket. And, you know, let's go do that right now. How long is this thing gonna take, you think? Yeah, depends on the busyness of the gas station. Okay, what's the longest? It's just fucking packed. Fucking 20 pack, minutes. 20 minutes, Okay. 45 minutes, this girl was at the gas station because she had to call her mom to get her lucky numbers, call her dad to cross-reference these lucky numbers. They're in Germany, so she had to, like, do a fucking calling card each time with both of these people to, like, figure out number to lose because, of course, they didn't fucking win. You know, they haven't been winning. <laughs> she was like, I need to call my mom to get the special numbers. They're not special because they don't work. Like, okay. obviously, like, if they've been using those all the time, it doesn't work. Like, why are we... And my friend, you know, she has a baby, right? She's living and she's like, I didn't, I thought it was going to be like 10 minutes. Honestly, 10 minutes. To go pick up a lottery ticket, 20 minutes is fucking long. That's, that's what I'm like, I'm that's saying. That's really like, long. Is it like the whole story? 45 minutes. This girl just made my friend take her to the gas station to just stand there and call her parents and stuff to get a lottery ticket that didn't win shit. This girl is insane. Sounds uh, like a bitch. She's a bitch. I tell her every fucking... And then, see, I get mad at Miss Teach because she goes, I just need a vent. I'm like, I'm done here. Uh, nine I'm years now. I this heard bitch. every venting. Don't tell me because I'm, I'm giving you... I'm giving you feedback on how to fix this. You're not listening to me. Right. So, you don't get to bitch it to me anymore about it. Like, okay, okay, I need to re up. All right, no problem. You're the church or church of the week. Been a long, <laughs> been a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's funny because I'm all docile. I I lost my anger since I got it. But my jerk of the week is you'll gain it again right now. Just yeah. Like, we'll see. Actually, I'm kind of yeah. Well, <laughs> my jerk of the week is the fucking rent a cop at Texas A and M San Antonio who gave me a fucking ticket even though it was my fault. For <laughs> So, so back in the day, you know, the whole fucking reason I went to the school is because of the parking. That was literally the reason why I went. And it used to be great parking. I used to park right in the front of the building. Like, I walked right into the building. And every semester now, it's been f- f- worse and worse. I have two more semesters left. I look at the thing. It says $90 for the next two semesters. Pat, I go, what a deal. Right? <laughs> I go, fuck it. Let me just buy one. Get, I would have to park way fucking far before I go. Let me just buy it. I'm going to park in the front. You know, at least in the parking lot. Right. So I can walk. I was having to park on, like, the fucking sides of the road to walk there. I buy it. And now this semester, all the park, all the parking lot right in front of the air, the school is for staff. Mm. And they made these other parking way behind everything, like, in the fucking woods for the students. And now they have my license plate, right? Because they didn't know I drove this car. It was just a random car. So... It was raining this morning or something, so I said, and it was fucking cold, so I said, fuck it, I'm just going to park, I'm going to take on my little sticker that says I'm a student, I'm going to park in the visitor's parking, that's really close. It wasn't even that close, but it was closer than Egypt that I usually had to park in. <laughs> and um, I go to class, 
And I was only there for 50 minutes. I kid you not, 50 fucking minutes. And I come out, there's a fucking ticket on my thing. And I guess they'd run my, my license plate. But this motherfucker is going to every license plate. Get a fucking life. Get a real fucking job, you piece of shit, ran a cop. Fucking asshole. Then fucking dropped out of the police academy because you can't do anything better but run fucking license plates at a fucking college. Fucking bitch. Because you can't even go to the college that's fucking there. So. Dumbass. Uh, okay, you know what? It didn't come to me. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, you're going to get it. <laughs> it is $50. That's what sucks, too. In North Vista, that's it was so like petty. 20 bucks. It was so 20 bucks. Petty. You know, back at tw- North Vista, you get busted. 20 bucks. Uh, okay, fuck it. 20 bucks. Here. Fifty dollars. That's fucking bullshit. Like, I already paid ninety for a parking pass that does not even in front of the school. You should let me fucking have one day where I don't have to fucking walk thirty miles. It takes me like fifteen minutes to walk to my class. It's like, ridiculous. I have to get there an hour ahead just because of the fucking walk. Like, <laughs> <coughs> anyways. So that's my drink of the week. Yeah. Fuck you. We're gonna. I. I had the fucking ticket. I was gonna say his piece of shit name. Just put it out there because he sucks. We're going to track him down. Because he is a piece of shit and should feel like such. And his name should be out there as such. But I forgot the name. I, yeah, I forgot fuck it. him. It's not even worth it. It's mm. not worth the time. Mm. It's not worth the time. Watch him be like an abolism. Right. <laughs> well, if you're a fan, please don't leave. Just understand nah, Fuck you. Go to hell. Eat shit and die. Yeah, we're okay with 46 likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could go down to 46 from 47. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Um... Which, by the way, quick note, you guys need to start promoting it. We've been <laughs> we've been active for a year, and we only got 47 <laughs> likes. Come on, man. There's new pages that pop up that get, like, 30,000 likes yeah, in 10 happen? weeks. I don't get that. Oh, it's so ridiculous. But anyway, anyway, I digress. Yeah. My Jerk of the Week. Buckle up for this one, bitches. The saga. The ends. saga is somewhat over. Uh, it's left open for a sequel. Um, as they usually are. Yeah. So... Uh, if you are a new listener, um, <laughs> I've had a lot of problems with my upstairs neighbor. A lot of back and forth, a lot of verbal altercations. The kind of the the biggest situation we had was what we described in the last episode, um, where some guy was knocking on my door. I thought it was my upstairs neighbor, or like I thought he was fucking with me. Blew, turned into this big old thing. Ended up being not what it was um it wasn't him and so i don't know if i've ever mentioned it but my upstairs neighbor has this little buddy of his Mm -hmm. that um that they talk in the dog park he this guy's always over upstairs because this guy has a big ass dog too he's white guy so my upstairs neighbor is mexican guy his buddy is white guy setting those those are the characters' names. These are the people's names. White guy and Mexican guy. You know their names, or I know my upstairs neighbor's okay. name, but I'm not going to say his name. Okay. Just out of respect. Out sure. of respect. Wow, that's what what has what's changed since then, right? <laughs> exactly, right. So here we go. So I don't know if I said this, but if I have, if I have, I'm sorry for repeating. If not, oh well. Let's recap. Let's Good recap. So somebody's been turning off my power to my apartment. So you, you've been, you've been in my apartment, you know, like the parking lot right there by the dog park Mm -hmm. on the side of the building. Well, let's say this is the building on the side right here is the giant like electrical boxes. I had no idea it was that easy to just turn off an apartment. Yeah. Neither did I. Or the fact that there'd be be a lock on it or something. Yeah. So yeah. The Walnut Hills. (laughs) You're big round of applause. Walnut Hills, the best. And also, too, Walnut Hills is part of my jerk of the week because when I confronted them about somebody turning off my power, all they said was, oh, multiple people have had their power turned off. There's nothing we can do about it. And it's like, oh, thanks. Here, like, like, here's a lock. Like, let me buy you this lock. I was like, I'll fucking spend a weekend teaching myself how you to do it. You can even hold the key. Right? Just don't give it to anyone. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, this is for you. Yeah. Uh, labor free. Yeah. Um, you don't have to pay for it. So, yeah, so somebody's been turning off the fucking power. Like, the main generator. It's like a generator. fuse box or something? Yeah, it's like a fuse box to the building. It's like, there's there's the main generator for the entire building, and then there's each individual apartment for the power. Like, the individual power boxes. So, yeah, somebody's been going and fucking... Boop, tw- taking twenty four twenty, boop, and flipping the power off. Cause when we get home from work or whatever, and we're trying to turn on the lights. Oh, and your fridge and shit too. Yeah, luckily we haven't had anything go bad. Actually, your fridges are pretty it. good about that. Keep if you them. keep them closed, yeah. yeah, nothing will happen. Um, and luckily we haven't like the power hasn't been off <coughs> for obnoxious amount of times. 
Mm-hmm. So this happened once on Leslie mom Leslie's mom's birthday dinner. I got home. That was the first time we saw it, and we like we were like, no, we paid the power bill. Like we took care of it. What the fuck? Um, and when the emergency maintenance people came out, they're like, oh yeah, someone manually turned off the power to the apartment. And I was like, what the fuck? Automatically assumed it was yeah the yeah guy yeah. Upstairs. I've had so much shit. And so although then, the last time it wasn't them, it was that random guy looking for the Abbey. Yeah. And even then, y'all seem to be on the same page of, like, we yeah, should let's just he, get this guy. Like, y'all... Because he was like, damn, this guy's, like, man, like, David's yelling at me because of this guy. He thinks I set this guy up to bother him or whatever. Yeah. So that's when he was like, what are you looking for, you know? Huh? He goes, the Abbey is down over there, you know, or whatever. So I was just like, what the fuck? So then... We, the power got turned back on that night, whatever, right? A couple days later, I get home from work. The power is off again. Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm fucking furious. Mm-hmm. So, and I go outside. And I'm standing outside in the parking lot. And I'm on, like, I'm calling the front office. And I see my upstairs neighbor and his girlfriend. And then, like, he's kind of, like, walking all stupid or whatever. Um, the Mexican guy. And he's, like, he kind of sees me standing by the power box. And he kind of, like stops like stops talking and everything they get in the car and leave so i'm like oh they, i know it's this motherfucker i know it's this motherfucker like why else would he get all quiet and awkward when he sees me on the phone mm-hmm. you know standing by it so then that's when i went to the front office and you know i complained i was like someone's been turning off because this was a second time because i i called them the next day about the first time and they were like oh okay that's strange yeah we'll definitely keep an eye on it I, I <laughs> yeah and they're so, all the same dude. it's really not just one that yeah they're all like that so then I, like, I called the office. I was like, hey, this is David from 2420. I was like, somebody turn off her power again. Oh, okay, let me place you on a brief hold. She had me on hold for, like, 20 minutes. And then Leslie finally gets home from work. And she was like, are you still on the phone with them? And I was like, yeah, I'm still on the phone with them. And she was like, that's it. And so we went to the office. They just carried on with their day, like, as if nothing had, like, and I was like, yeah, I'm still on hold. And they're, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And this, this, and that. I was like, yeah. Say they, this again. You went to the office. We went to the office, and I still while on hold. While on hold, <laughs> and she's just at her desk, like da, 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 da. with that girl, that... The, the girl I was talking oh. to. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, "What the fuck?" So then, me and Leslie both like, one, what the hell? Wow, clearly. Wow. And so I hung up, and I was like, Two. "They're waiting for you to hang up." But I'm a guarantee it. Yeah. I guarantee, oh, yeah, guarantee yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Classic customer service move. Yes. Classic. Yes, move. yes, yes. Um. So it was just like, what the fuck. So then the lady was like, yeah, we've gotten several reports, this, this, and that. And I was like, that's not acceptable. I was like, if you're getting several reports, what are you guys doing about it? Right. Oh, we have people that are going to lock them up and this, this, and that. And it's like, and I asked, I was like, when's the exact date that you guys are doing this? Well, we don't have anything right now. We're still in the quoting fra- phase. I was like, so you don't have anybody coming to do it? Well, no. we. Ha- I was like, no, you said that you're in the quoting phase. That means you're submitting information to get a price to see if you guys want to do it. You guys are going to find the perfect company, whatever's cheapest for you, and then you're going to do it. And she was like, well, when you say it like that, and I was like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm saying it how it is. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. So then, hasn't didn't happen ever again. Fast forward, about a week or two. I go, I clean my car, I get it, get it, take it to a car wash or whatever, right? And I come home and I'm cleaning the windows outside or whatever. White guy, Mexican guy's friend. Uh-huh. He sees me outside, he sees me cleaning my car. He's kind of staring at me from the dog park. I see him, but I have my sunglasses on, so you can't really tell I'm looking at him. So I'm kind of like, the fuck does this guy want? He wants to fuck with me? Go ahead, let him fuck with you me. You want some fuck? You want some fuck? <laughs> um, I was like, go ahead, let him fuck with me. Because I've been, because ever since the whole light thing and the guy knocking on my door, like, I don't have an official pocket knife, but I've been carrying, like, kitchen knives, like, with me. Like, anytime, like... Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't gone time to go to Academy, so I've been carrying fucking, like, butcher knives. Where do you carry this butcher knife? It's in my glove box. You walk downstairs with a, but- with a butcher knife and just put it in your glove box? Yeah. What if you ever get pulled over? Isn't that kind of awkward to have, like, a, like, why do you have a butcher knife in your glove box, there? Protection. Okay, okay, fast forward. Okay. Still nice. I was like, still nice. <laughs> and I'll fit official pocket knife, that's hilarious. I was like, I just haven't gone time to go to the yeah, 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 academy yeah, right there, so okay. it's like, but I want something, so I'm like, okay, so like, I kind of see him staring at me, so when I'm like, cleaning on the inside, I take the knife and I put it on my front seat, because I'm like, I need this here, just in case. Yeah. So, he walks out, he's like, what's up, bro? And I was like, what's up? You he's like, get cut, motherfucker. Right, I'm kind of like... <laughs> Like, I'm being very, like, 
attempt like attentive to the situation. And I'm like, what's up? He's like, yeah, man. And he goes, how have you been? I was like, good. And he's like, hell yeah, brother. And he kind of starts chuckling and he walks away with his dog. And I was like, the fuck? You know what yeah, I mean? That's weird. And like, I'm staring at him and he keeps looking back at me and he's just like laughing as he's walking away. And I'm kind of like, what the fuck? And I'm kind of like, I'm really like, this is fucking bugging me out. And I'm getting all paranoid and mm. shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who, like, who, does, who, who gives him the right to fucking talk to me? You know what I mean? I was yeah, all yeah, like, yeah. what the hell? So I go back upstairs on Tulsa. And I was like, yeah, that fucking white guy fucking talked to me. So, and I was like, I don't fucking, I don't like the way he fucking talked to me. Yeah. And he was like, hell yeah, brother. And I'm like, he's not Hulk Hogan. Like, yeah. get the fuck out of here, brother. And I was like, the hell? And I'm going all off, and I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. She's just back to doing her makeup because she was going to work. So then I go to go, I go out to get lunch because I'm just at home all day. And as I open, like as I'm closing the door and locking it, he's coming out of the dog park, and he's like, "What's up, brother?" And I was like, "What's up?" And he's like, "Do you put this sign here?" And there's like some sign on the dog park, and it says like "Lost Keys" and it has a phone number. And I, I like I looked at, it, I was like, "No, I didn't put any sign up." And he was like, do you know who put this up then? I was like, no. He was like, hmm. And he's just kind of staring at me. He just slowly takes it down and he just walks off. And I'm like, the fuck? Like, what? what's up with this Last guy? Keys. Yeah, I was like, the hell? And I was just like, and then it had some like weird, it wasn't even like a 210 number. It was like eight something, something or another. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And that was the last of it. I, and I didn't see that guy anymore that day. I was kind of like, okay. Weird. So fast forward <laughs> to the first Saturday of October, Eric and Chanel's wedding. We go and we have a fabulous time, beautiful ceremony, beautiful party. It was very fun. Got to get drunk with my teammates at work. Very great. So Leslie showed up later. You know, she showed up right about when dinner started. Leslie's down. She was like, hey, she was like the upstairs neighbor, the Mexican guy. He was on his balcony talking to the white guy. Somebody broke into his truck. Cause he drives a truck and I was like, really? She was like, yeah, he she, I overheard him and he was saying that somebody broke into his truck and somebody has been turning his power off. Mm. And I was like, fuck, he's going to think it was us. Mm -hmm. I was like, he's going to think it was us. And I'm kind of buzzing at this point. So I'm going to be like, I was like, oh fuck. Mm. And I was just like, oh wow. I was like, no, I was like, that's fucking weird. And she was like, yeah, I overheard him. He was pissed and he was just on his balcony. He's going to be staring at his truck all night. I was like, damn. I was like, well, if he's on, if he's out there when we get home, I'm going to talk to him. No, no, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to talk to him, man to man. Well, sure. I was like, I'm going to talk to him, man to man. I'm going to get to the bottom of what's going on. Because it happened to you too. So yeah. Well, no one's fucked with my car, but, but the power turned. Get the power off. Because I was like, if his power is being turned. I kind off. of feel like it's kids though. The power. Off? Okay. I'll let so, it. So let it be. Yeah. So, and it was a long one, but it's going to be so worth it. Um, so we have fun. I get really fucked up. Can I just say, it just boggles my mind that you don't make an apartment complex where people can't just open power boxes and turn off. It used to be covered. When we first moved in, it used to be covered, but then we had some storm and it got all, the wood boarding got all warped. So they just took everything down. Oh, and, smart. Yeah. And so it's just like, oh yeah, okay. a, little, a little creaky. We got to take it off. All right. Just um, leave it exposed. Sure. Yeah. But. Okay. okay. That so, gives more context though. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we get home and the guy is outside in his truck. Mexican guy, my upstairs neighbor is up, is downstairs in his truck. He just parked it when we got home. He's kind of backing out a little bit. Cause I guess he was parked a little crooked and I was like, Hey, 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 it was, it was like David. And I, he was like, what? And I was like, don't mean to bother you. And she got home before she came to where we were at the event we went to. She overheard you saying that somebody's been turning off your power. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, somebody's been turning off my power. And he was like, are you fucking serious, bro? I was like, yeah, dude. I was like, somebody's been fucking with you're fucking with my power. I was like, it, it's happened about three times now. He goes, dude, it's been happening to me too. He goes, it's happened a couple times. And I was and I was like, and she told me somebody broke into your fucking car, bro? And he's like, yeah, bro. Somebody broke in my fucking car. Somebody fucked in my windows and... Broke my, broke my, like this, you know how trucks have that sliding window in the back? Mm. Yeah, so many, so like it's been open this whole time, like it, it can't close it. 
And I was like, dude, what the fuck? And Leslie was like, yeah, I, I wasn't meaning to eavesdrop, but I know we've been kind of having problems with stuff around here. And I, I hearing somebody else say they have the same problems kind of helps, you know, is, you know, kind of calming us down about things. And he was just like, he was like, bro, I honestly thought it was you fucking with me. And I was like, I thought it was you fucking with me because of everything that we've had, bro. And he goes, bro, I know. And so we're just kind of like, damn, like, well, if it's not you and, and, you know, if it's not us, I was like, then what's really going on? And he was like, you know what, dude? He goes, I don't know if you've seen those group of teenagers that walk around, like, with the basketball. He goes, I think it's them. And I was like, you know what? For a brief second, I think, you know, I was thinking the same thing. You know, I was like, but I thought they were just too stupid to figure out how to turn off power and shit like that. Like, you really got to, that's like next level shit you got to think about because I'm all drunk and everything. As if it's super difficult just to go, beep, but like, for them to know that that's what it is. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, what the hell? And so he was like, yeah, I know, bro. So then white guy comes up and white guy, his buddy is like, he goes, Hey guys, you know, what's going on? And you know, I was like, yeah, dude, I was like, we're talking, you know, somebody fucking, you know, is, is fucking with their shit. And this, he goes, oh yeah, somebody in my building's fucking with my shit too. So I was like, yeah, there's, so there's somebody going around fucking with people's apartments at this complex. What the fuck? So then we're all just talking shit, bro, 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 like this fucking guy is talking to each other, and of course I'm all drunk, so I'm extra broing everything up. Bro, no way, bro, like I'm doing double bros. Um, bro, 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 bro. And so then my upstairs neighbor, Mexican guy, he's like, yeah, but I'm from Laredo, I stay fucking strapped, and he pulled out this gun, and I'm kind of like, oh shit. I was like, all right. No <laughs> I was, I'm fucking holding my Whataburger bag, like, damn, I was like, okay, this, this shit's getting real now. Yeah. So. So I was like, okay, I was like, well, I'm going to go upstairs. I was like, I was like, I'm going to go eat my dinner. And I was like, look, I was like, like, we got to fucking, you know, if people are fucking with us, we got to look out for each other, bro. And this, this, and that. And he, and then he was all like, and he goes, he goes, Hey, I know, I know it's my fucking girl. That's loud all the time, bro. He goes, I don't even, I don't even work here in San Antonio. He goes, I stay here every now and then. He goes, I work out of Laredo. I'm driving back and forth. Oh, and you knew this though, right? You knew that he, like, or y'all thought that he broke up. Yeah, we thought he broke up. Apparently, he just works out of town. Is he an oil guy? Yeah, he, yeah, Yeah, he does, well, he does construction. Sounds like it. So, it was kind of like, okay. So, then he's all like, he goes, we've gotten the complaints, bro. He goes, but you know what? (coughs) It's her, bro. He's she's always bringing random niggas over to the apartment. This, this, and that. Oh. He goes, I know she's cheating on me. And then, oh. and I was just like, oh shit. So my drunk so ass, deep. yeah. So my drunk ass goes, yeah. There was some time I was on my balcony. And some dude was on there and asked him to turn the music down. And he, did. she goes, yeah. See, bro. He goes, I knew she was bringing guys over. And he's all looking at white guy, his buddy. All like, see, I. So told that was you. him that you had that conversation with. No. When I told him to yeah, turn to me, the girl. I was just like, oh, <laughs> well, granted, no, they haven't been fighting here recently. Um, he's, so, so cool. he's like, yeah, I know she's fucking cheating. He's, yeah, that was kind of, that was throwing That's me it. off. I was like, <laughs> fucking knew it. He's now like, he's so good enough. He said no. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's, he's probably yeah, doing the same the thing. Truth. <laughs> yeah. Right, he's probably right. fucking bitches in Laredo. <laughs> so yeah so he's fucking he, like he's like i fucking knew it and he and he has so he says this and i just kind of like oh okay bro um he's like see he goes put her in her fucking place dude he's like if, if she's being fucking loud go up there bang on the door call the cops on her get her the fuck out of here he goes those are her fucking dogs i hate those dogs bro <laughs> he goes and i know they pound into the furniture and shit and i know you can hear it i wish i could kill those fucking dogs bro oh, and i'm just kind of like yeah we go that far. And i was like all right <laughs> And then, but no, here's the kicker. And he goes, you know what? It, it, you know, if she's being a bitch, if she's being loud and shit, go in there and fucking kick her ass, bro. And he's oh, like, kick the shit. shit out of her. And I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, oh my God. I was like, what the hell? I was like, uh, walk away. That's when you walk away. <laughs> That's what I was like. Yeah, I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, man. I was like, well, you know, we'll, you know, I was like, you know, if you see anything, let rain me know. Rain check on the kicking your girlfriend's ass. I was like, yeah, rain check on domestic abuse. <laughs> Um, I'm not getting pulled in this ring. You have a weapon. I don't know if that's registered. You know, like, um, now you're telling me to kick her ass. You're talking about murdering dogs. You know, I'm like, my Whataburger fries are getting cold. So I'm going to go inside. So then, um, he gives me his number. We exchange numbers and, um, I don't exchange number with the white guy. I was just like, I oh, whatever. He just kind of showed up yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. quiet. He lives in the apartment complex though? Yeah, he lives in the same, co- I don't know where he lives, but I know he's always at the dog park. So, Sunday, well, I tell Leslie everything, and she was like, oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, I know. Um, so, Sunday, 
I'm at home majority of the day. I'm just chilling, right? So I'm there at the house. I'm playing NBA 2K19. Just like not a pound, but like a like a fast knock. I'm like, what the hell? So I look out and it's my upstairs neighbor. It's the Mexican guy. So I open the door. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? And he goes, bro. He goes, I know who's been fucking with all of our shit. And I was, oh, I forgot. I forgot about this. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and he, is, so this is literally the yeah, yeah, next yeah, day. Yeah, okay. And he goes, I know who's been <laughs> fucking with all of our shit. And I was like, wait, what? And I kind of closed the door behind. I was like, what's going on? And I was like, what do you mean? How do you know? And he goes, so he goes, after you left last night, after you went back upstairs, me and white guy were talking and he was saying that he saw, he saw it's the kids that, um, you know, that are playing basketball and shit. He knows it's them. And I was like, what? I was like, so it is those little punks. Cause he hangs out with them. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. So I saw them walking over there by the mailbox and, you know, by that building over there. So I went to go fucking confront them. And I started yelling at them and getting into an argument with them. And they started circling up and they told me it's my boy. It's white boy. And I was like, wait, it's, it's your buddy. It's the white guy. The white guy that comes to the dog park. The white guy that always hangs out with you. It's him, bro. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, how do you know? I was like, how do they know that? He sells pot to them. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, I was right. I was joking. I was totally kidding. <laughs> He goes, my, my friend sells pot to them. White boy sells pot to these teenagers. So when I started accusing them, they were like, no, you got it twisted, dude. It's your boy. It's your own homeboy. You got to talk to your boy. Why is he turning off the lights, though? Like, why are you turning off the power? So, is he fucking the girl? No, he's not fucking the girl. So, so yeah, so as soon as, like, the little teenagers ratted him out, his buddy showed up, and they were like, hey, you need to talk to your dude because he's blaming us for what you're doing. Because apparently this guy, this white boy, is bragging to all his little clientele. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm going around, I'm turning people's powers off, and I'm doing it to these two on purpose to make them fight. Oh. He was trying to instigate shit between me and my neighbor. And so as soon as he comes up, he's like, what's going on? And they're like, yeah, like we just told him that you're doing all of this shit. And he fucking took off. Like he fucking ran oh, away. Shit. So my How old does this guy look? My upstairs neighbor... No, he, the white guy. I don't know. He he looks like he's in, like, his mid-20s. Like, maybe he's a couple years older than me. Oh, my God. And then your, your neighbor... My upstairs neighbor looks like he's younger than me. And he sounds like he's younger than me. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, what the fuck? And he goes, yeah, so I fucking... I go over to his place, and I'm like, no, you get the fuck out here. And he's trying to tell me that he's on meth, and that he's an addict, and he's really struggling with stuff. And that he did, like he feels possessed when he's doing this kind of shit to us. And this, this, and that. And, like, he he broke into his fucking truck. His own homeboy is the one that broke into his truck because he knows he has money in the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn. And he goes, dude, I let that guy into my fucking house, bro. He goes, that dude's met some of my relatives that stay here. Oh, wow. And he's like... I thought they might have just met on the apartment complex. Yeah, well, they did meet on the apartment complex, but I guess they got really close. It's like, been a long time, I guess. Yeah. And so I was like, really? He goes, dude, he goes, I can't believe that fucking guy, bro. He goes, he's the one that's been fucking with everybody here at this building, bro. And he's like, don't talk to that fucking guy. Because, dude, that guy said he was fucking crazy, bro. He's on meth, bro. And he's a drug dealer. So do you know his name, though? No. I don't, I don't know the white guy's name. And you don't name. know where he lives? No. Does the friend? The, the friend? Neighbor? The friend knows his name. Yeah, the friend knows everything And he about lives in guy. the apartment complex? Yeah. So y'all need to let them know. Right? He he told him the my oh, upstairs okay. neighbor told the office and I haven't seen this guy since. Yeah, but I'm not done with the story yet. Okay, so so he's telling me all of this shit right, and I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, you gotta stay, you gotta be careful, bro. He goes, I'm gonna look after you and your girl. He goes, I don't say this in a creepy way. He goes, but I know what cars you drive. We live in the same building. Yeah, you know, yeah we park yeah. in the same parking lot. I was like, yeah, no. I was like, no, I got you. I was like, I, I know the cars that you guys drive. He goes, so if I see anything, bro, he goes, because like I said, I work in Laredo. So when I'm here in town, I'm here in the apartment. I don't know any, a lot of people here. I don't go to a lot of places here. He goes, so I'll be on my fucking balcony 24-7 like a fucking security dog. I mean, don't you park on the other side, though? So, sometimes he parks on that side. Sometimes he parks. Where do you no, park, though? I always park right there by the dog park, by the trash can in the dog park. Oh, okay. I always park there. I don't like parking on the other side. Okay. That's where I always just park. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I always park on, like, if this is my building. Yeah, that's kind of farther away, though, right? Where you park. Not really. You just got to walk through the dog park a little bit. 
I'm gonna walk through it. Just... Well, cause you can park right in front of the, your stairs, can't you? Yeah, but I park to cause my 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 apartment's right here, closer to this parking lot. Yeah, so if I park good. on it's this side, then I walk upstairs. And... <laughs> I just didn't even realize because I always park in that little area. Yeah, but it's just like um. So he's like, yeah. He goes, I'll keep an eye on you guys. He goes, call me or text me whenever you need me. He goes, if you just want to hang out. This and I was like, yeah, okay, dude. Get you know. <laughs> so we, you know, dap or whatever and carry on, and then um. About 30, 45 minutes later, I hear somebody pounding on his door. Bro, just talk to me, bro. Just talk to me. Apparently, this guy showed up to his apartment. Oh, fuck. And I was like, what? So I paused my game. I'm all, oh. And so I hear him, get the fuck away from my door, dude. He goes, I, 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 sh- I got to shoot you right where you stand, you motherfucker. He goes, I will, I'm going to handle this shit myself. I'm not Especially a pussy. Through my truck, <laughs> yeah. Like He's like, I'm not going to call the cops like a bitch. He goes, I won't fucking end your life right here if you don't get the fuck away from my door, bro. And you hear, like, the door slam and this and that. And you just hear, bro, bro. And then you hear him, like, Paw, pounding down the stairs. And then he, he, like, standing, like, right there, like, by my balcony and everything. He goes... He's like, you know, fuck you, bro. He goes, come down here like you're a little bitch. I'll, I want to go get my fucking ARs, my AKs. I want to fucking bring hellfire to you, bro. And this And I'm like... Oh, the white kid has ARs. And- <laughs> yeah, and I was like... <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, holy shit. And I was like, AKs? I was like... He's full of shit. He probably smoked him if he did have them. All right. I was just like... I was like, what the fuck? But it's so concerning to hear that they're yeah, going to have yeah. a fucking oh, yeah. shootout. Yeah, and, out too. and I'm like, what the hell? So finally he comes down. Like the guy, come, my upstairs neighbor comes out. And he's just like, you need to calm the fuck down, bro. You need help. You're sick in your fucking head, bro. And he goes, you know what? I'm from fucking Laredo. He goes, I know people that I'll be here in 10 minutes flat to fucking kill you, bro. From Laredo? Yeah, I got I was because I'm kinda of standing by the door and I'm just that listening to everything. Sense, right? You got you're using two of your references. I'm from Laredo and my friends will be here in ten minutes. Those are some like, things, but yeah, I'm that like, really makes sense together. I was like <laughs> Okay. And so they're just going back and forth from the white guys who goes, Man, I'm from fucking Kansas, bro. I'm a fucking hillbilly. We're crazier than you fucking Mexicans. You guys think you're all tough with your cartels and shit. Nah man, he goes, We can fuck we can fuck you Mexicans up worse than anything. Like and I'm like Dude, what the hell? And I'm like, and then they're just going back and forth, back and forth. And the white guy is like, you know, I'm just trying to tell you sorry, bro. The Mexican guy, no, fuck you. You broke into my truck, bro. You've been fucking with people. He goes, you're fucking sick. You're a drug dealer. What the fuck, bro? That's so weird. Like, I don't want to fucking look at you, bro. And they're just fucking going back and forth, yelling at each other and talking about killing each other and this and that. (laughs) And I'm like, what the fuck? So then... Then they finally ends, right? I hear the guy go upstairs. I text him. I'm like, hey, is everything okay, dude? Like, just calm down. I was like, you know, like, just ignore him. I was like, he's, you know, like, he's crazy, bro. Just don't pay him any mind. I was like, let him talk all the shit he wants. He won't do nothing. He's like, you're right, dude. You're right. And he was all like, where were you? He goes, man, I really needed this advice today. And I'm like... All right. How funny how that's come, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay. We all come in y'all's relationship. So then... So then I hear, so then the white guy comes back and he's all like, dude, dude, come on, just talk to me. Just talk to me, bro. This is the second time. Yeah. He so left and came back. And then he came back. He's like, just talk to me, bro. And I hear the sliding door open and I hear a gun cock. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, shit's about to go down. So I'm like, oh my God. So I bring Bulma in. I'm like, oh, get in here. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. Like I'm all, I'm fucking paranoid. I'm like, what the hell? And then the the white guy, he's like, those sound like ghost shells, bro. He goes, is that what you're going to cap me with, ghost shells? Fucking do it. Do it. Fucking kill me right here, bro. Do it. And I'm kind of looking at my bedroom window like, holy shit. Like, this guy is like, come on. Come on. Like, just going crazy. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, what's going on? I didn't know what to do. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. And um, I was like, holy moly. And then the and then he finally <laughs> leaves. <laughs> I was like, holy moly. Um, he finally leaves. And so the guy texts me later that night. Um, Lester's neighbor, he goes, yeah, I'm going to go to the office. I'm telling him everything, bro. And this is an hour. I was like, okay. And I haven't seen the white guy since. You know, they can... Um, I, so... <laughs> Maybe I won't go into too much detail, but one of the, one of our dealers that Mrs. Teach was actually rather close with back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> back in her day before I met her. Um, but it ended up becoming okay, it was her it was her old boyfriend. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> He's a sweet guy though. <laughs> he was a jealous pot for a while. Um but <clears throat> 
you know, everyone go buy a platform or whatever, whatever, not everyone, but he had his clientele. But, you know, they figure that out. And then the apartment complex, you know, he loved, he would always have his friends stay over. You know how stupid guys are, you know, when they're single, let their friends just stay over and crash on the couch or whatever because they're hanging out. He was at work or something. He was at school. He actually got his, he has like a, he has a bachelor's in psychology or whatever. He's in the military <laughs> now. But he was at school at the time and his friend was there and he let the people in and then it was cops, you know, undercover, no. not under, like undercover, but cops. And then they found weed, all the weed everywhere. And they just kicked him out. They were like, yeah, this is, you know, to distribute. And they didn't arrest him and they didn't give him a charge. They just kicked him out of the apartment complex. Right. So was like, I bet you that's something they did with this guy. If I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised because I haven't seen him They since. just need, you know, for that guy to tell him, probably give him enough to go and take care of that, you know, the apartment complex. It's like, I haven't, I personally haven't seen him, but that dude's truck is still there because he has his own truck. And I'm just kind of like, oh, like I kind of got heartbroken. The white for, guy's truck? Yeah, or? the white guy's truck. Oh. Um, like his, his truck is still there, like in the parking lot, but it gets moved into different places. Uh-huh. So if he Does is still work? there. No. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. it, yeah, it's like, because it gets parked in different spots and then parked in different positions. But it is kind so of. So Park City has a apartment complex, but he worked, I mean, he lives in a different one? You talk, no, what are you talking about? Where do you see his truck? In our in our parking lot, but there's three buildings that are right okay, there. Okay, so he's yeah. at a different building, but yeah. within that... Okay. Yeah, okay, and okay, a little closer, because okay. it's ours, then, like, yeah, building yeah, 23, yeah. then, like, I don't know why I was sitting, like, one per building, but... No, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so he's got to still be there, then. He has to, or if he's just parking, like, to fuck with somebody, I don't know. But then, like, the the thing that was kind of heartbreaking, not, like, heartbreaking, heartbreaking, but I was kind of like, oh, their poor friendship. Yeah. Because my upstairs neighbor, because he installed some floodlights on top of his truck, mm-hmm. um, and then my upstairs neighbor was helping them install those lights oh. one night, and I was kind of like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, they do meth. Friendship rot. Friendship yeah. rot. I promise they will never do meth. Thank you. And rob your truck. And Please. turn off your lights. Please don't. Although, now that I know they're open, I kind of just want to fuck with you. <laughs> Uh, if you it want. sounds so easy right down the street. Yeah, no, right? it's it's very... And you know what? And I was very tempted to turn off his... Because when I thought it was yeah, Master's yeah, Neighbor, yeah. I was so tempted to go turn off his lights, but I didn't know what apartment number he is. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to walk up there just to walk back down. And then, like, right, what if he's home? Like a suspect. Sudden, boom, and then the lights go off. So it was crazy. It was a crazy shock of events. Um, We haven't had any problems since. Um, with the upstairs neighbors, I mean, they're loud during the day, but it's mostly the dogs. Mm. And then I feel, I, I feel... Why don't you just go up there and whip her ass? <laughs> right, I should, I got the invitation to, yeah. so it's like... It's I, totally okay. I, I should have gone up there. Um, yeah, but no, we haven't had any problems. That guy hasn't been back, um, that I can see. I just see his truck, but I, I don't know. Well, fuck them both, if you ask me. <laughs> I'd stay away from the both of them, David. Yeah, I was like, I don't mean... Ever yeah. since that night, I haven't texted him, you yeah. know, and I was like, his number is just, like, I have his Although messages. Although shit goes down, then you should text him. I'd be like, hey, but bro, um, I kind of got this I wouldn't situation. make a connection with this guy. Yeah, no, it was it was very strange, very strange weekend, um, um, but moral of the story is, none of that would have happened if Don't I went do to see Metallica on <laughs> I that Saturday. I don't think anything that would have changed. Yeah, because then I wouldn't have been home. Wait, that happened this Saturday? That and happened last Saturday. At my wedding? No. This, uh, Eric and, after Eric and Chanel's wedding, when we got home... The last Saturday was my wedding. Because it's... That's this past Saturday. That's last Saturday. What's this past Saturday? The Saturday before last. The Saturday place. before last. Okay. October 6th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that Saturday night when I was like, well, you're doing... No, that's happening to you too? When and did then, you get home? Well, this was all at... 10 o'clock. Oh. So 10 o'clock is when we had the, the meeting in the parking lot at night. And then Sunday evening, like around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, is when he had the showdown mm-hmm. with his neighbor. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it was brutal. Have you had any situation like that with a neighbor? No. Well, you know, the only really bad neighbor... I've never had bad neighbors until... Wanna Hill. Fucking Wanna Hill. And it was never that bad. It actually missed a teach out the front of it because I was never really there <clears throat> for it. I gave the one guy the bill one time and he was just kind of like... Oh, this is ridiculous, but we'll see. He was kind of like, yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But basically, we're going to blow me off. Mrs. Teacher's on the one up there was like, um, you're the parent, I'm calling the cops. Like, either way, and then they got into I wasn't even there. I wasn't even home, though. So she had an experience like that, but I did not. You let your woman handle everything? Hell yeah. He for she <laughs> movement is so, that's, I'm about it. That's right. That is <laughs> My baby right. take care of me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. 
full reel, full reel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're about an hour and 20 minutes into this episode. We had a very lot to talk about. It's good. Kind of what I want to do now going forward with episodes when we have episodes like this where we talk about a lot of content, kind of our personal things, we do something called quick hits hmm. where we just kind of... Lightly. Should we, should we get a uh, sound for it? A sound for it? Yeah. Hey, let's let's look it up while I pull up some of the quick hits. Okay. That um. Are you I saying? Are you saying quick hits? Quick, like fast. Uh huh. Hits. Qu- quick hits. Quick hits. Say it again. Quick hits. What are you saying? Quick hits. One more time. Quick hits. Okay. Thank you. Let, I I'm just gonna push buttons here. Uh, just push buttons. Let's see what goes on. Let's go. Oops. All right. All right. <laughs> Quick okay. hits. Mm. Let's try it again. Let's see. Like, all right, but no. Ready for quick hits. All right. Okay, Let's pick okay, another okay. sound. Okay. Quick hits. That sounded cool. I like that one. That. That, that one. Uh, quick hits. That is a quick hit. Yeah, that's... Right. What about... There's a two. There's laser and laser two. It's laser two. Laser one. Laser one. Okay, what about... I like that one. That was also quick hits, right? <laughs> It's rapid fire, quick you know? Hits. Yeah. All right, so welcome to Who Cares? Quick Hits. Nice. <laughs> quick hit number one. <coughs> Wait... Can I make a drink? How long yes. Does it take? Okay. And now, Who Cares presents the first edition of Quick Hits. <laughs> All right, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work uh, on getting that. We're gonna have season two is gonna be a lot tighter this <laughs> Tight. time. We're, just tighten up. We're just gonna we're gonna have we're gonna go through our vaginal rejuvenation here to give us the <laughs> tightest like, show. Knocked up where they're telling her the not lose weight just. Tighten up. No. <laughs> we're not going to lose anything. We're just going to tighten everything up. Tighten, tighten everything up? Yeah. That's what we're going to do. We are going to tighten this show up. So that way it's more streamlined content mm. to you. Mm. Subscribe to the Who Cares Network. Only nine ninety nine a month. That's streamlining so much. Streamlining? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So quick hits. The point of this segment is we're just going to... Things that we... Things that happened in the week, we're just going to lightly talk about them and take it from there. So, main thing I want to talk about real quick, WWE has their second pay-per-view in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's called Crown Jewel. It's going to be on November 2nd from, I don't know the name of the city. Um, and it's, the like I said, second pay-per-view. They had a pay-per-view in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, back in April, called the Greatest Royal Rumble. Historic landmark event. It's the first, you know, it's the first, you know, live stream pay-per-view from a different country for WWE. Um, outside of a main pay-per-view, because SummerSlam was in Canada a long time ago. Um, or no, in UK a long time ago, excuse me. So... Very crazy thing to happen, but it got a lot of blowback because the women weren't allowed to wrestle. And as recently pointed out by John Oliver, that show really was just a giant propaganda piece to kind of promote how cool Saudi Arabia is. Mm. Kind of saying like, oh, hey, yeah, we're some new revitalized Saudi Arabia. We're letting women drive now. Mm. And they did have a lot of filler pieces just promoting Saudi Arabian things. I'm kind of okay with that. You're okay with that? As far as promoting the, the progressiveness of Saudi Arabia, that's what I heard. I see, I didn't yeah, really yeah, follow yeah. this, but from what I heard you just say, it's a lot of like letting the new world know how Saudi Arabia is progressing. That doesn't sound like the worst thing to me. Now, if it, and, but the thing is, of course, they're going to take their piece from it. You're like, oh, we're reporting on this, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't see too much about that. Yeah. If it's so, the truth. And, and at that time, I didn't see too much of a problem with it then either. Mm-hmm. But then... Because there's some, there's a Saudi Arabian journalist, I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce his name, that went Can missing. I? Yeah, the name. Uh, That's okay, we don't. <laughs> yeah, so here it is, right? Oh, uh, you? Okay, so yeah, so that's it. I'm not any good, okay. Jamal Khashoggi. 
Sure. <laughs> sure. So this guy, um, who now just came out today that it, you know, their audio came out that he was tortured and murdered um, by Saudi nationalists. Um, but when he was missing, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia was pointing the finger at, bang, 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 good the old USA. Yeah. Um, and so state senators and local... Uh, for real. We're saying like, hey, WWE, you shouldn't be doing this pay per view while yeah. they're this country's accusing us of murdering a a journalist. But they always are. Yeah. Yeah. But then Vince McMahon, you know, just kind of like, hey, yeah, we're monitoring the situation. Like, no, nah. because mm-hmm. he they signed like the, apparently this ten this ten event deal with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and apparently there's all these legal ramifications if WWE backs out. Like, it's going to cost them millions and millions of dollars. You know, for breaking their deal and like Vince McMahon can get in all this trouble and this is and that and their shareholders, da 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 da. So it's kind of like, um, but now even some of the wrestlers are saying like, I don't feel comfortable with doing this show, and so and then it got it got even more kind of mainstream this event because I mean unless you're a wrestling fan, you're only going to know it's in Saudi Arabia because they promote it every fucking five minutes on Raw and SmackDown and stuff. Uh, from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, November 2nd, Crown Jewel at the main event, da 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 So after all of this stuff happened this past weekend, about everything, and kind of towards the tail end of last week, WWE is still promoting the Crown Jewel show, but they stopped saying where it's going to be from. Like, they stopped saying what city it's coming from or live from whatever. So it's kind of like, hmm, okay, so they're backing off of it, um... Is like so they're backing off of the city and kind of that tie with Saudi Arabia, hmm. but it's still going to be live in Saudi Arabia. And so now it got to the point where Donald Trump is about to get involved with it by saying like, "Hey, yeah." So Vince McMahon. So after they originally said we're monitoring the situation, then Vince McMahon said, "We'll we'll not do we will not go through with the show only if Donald Trump and the House of Representatives tell us not to." So pretty much every senator and everything like that is like. Like, hey, yeah, don't do it. But it's like, no, well, Donald Trump has this kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, hmm. And it's just like, because Vince McMahon is hardcore Republican and, you know, and mm-hmm, super rich. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so he's like, yeah, I'm going to wait for what my buddy Trump says. Yeah. And it's kind of like, um, I don't think they should do it mostly because apparently after the the Greatest Royal Rumble... The, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia were, like, degrading the women of WWE, saying, like, they're not women-like for wrestling and this, 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 and that, da 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 and, like, like we forbid, like, the women wrestlers weren't even allowed to be in the stadium. I remember um, what we talked about that. Yeah, here. and so I was kind of, oh, that is kind of shitty, because then it kind of goes against the point of that the past few years, WWE is trying to promote women wrestling, which, mm-hmm. um, October 28th, the the it's going to be the very first all female WWE pay per view event called Evolution, and it's all women, no men whatsoever. Because think about how many pay per views have been just men, right. no women, and the women wrestlers are really stepping it up. Like the, a lot of their matches are a lot better than some of the men's matches now. So it's kind of like yeah, there you know here's this whole progressive thing, and then it's like you want to promote these giant pay per views in this country that. Is against women. Yeah, pretty much, you know. I was like, a woman, die. So, it's, I don't know. I think it's really weird. I think WWE, it should have just been a one-hit wonder. You guys did some fancy event. It was promoted out the ass on the network and this, this, and that. Congratulations, you guys made a killing off of it. Then, a couple weeks ago, they just did their first pay-per-view live from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Called the WWE Super Showdown. Congrats, you guys are breaking barriers with doing pay-per-views in other countries, finally giving fans from other countries a taste of what it's like to be in America, as far as WWE-wise. <laughs> keep doing that, keep doing it from random countries, but yeah, I think it's just time to cut ties with Saudi Arabia. Mm, it's I too agree. risky, yeah. too risky. Um, speaking of risky as well, another quick hit. Um, Donald Trump met with Kanye West, oh Yeezus himself, God. yay. And Ugh. that was the weirdest thing in the world. I still don't know what the purpose of Kanye West meeting Con- with Donald Trump was. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, honestly. He's so weird. He's so weird. But apparently Kanye West got made fun of so much and got so much negativity that he's gone off of social media. Kanye he's, West? Yeah, Kanye West is doing oh, all good stuff. <laughs> Man, I mean, he barely tweets anyways. Um, but it was just like, What? 
Did you see, um, okay, who is the, uh, this is supposed to be cool cakes, right? So we get into details with each one of them, but, um, who was the guy that was, he's an SNL star that was dating Ariana Grande? P. Davidson. Okay, and I think they broke up. They just broke up a couple okay. days ago, yeah. Which is sad, because I thought that was a really cool kind of relationship thing. I, I thought it was a dumb relationship. They, they really... It's really weird, but I, I only seen this guy on a few clips, but I just thought he was cool. This guy was, like... He's funny, yeah. I feel like cool. we would get along. <laughs> like, if we had a few drinks together, we would get along. Anyways, he made a statement about, like... <clears throat> he even was like, okay, Kanye West is a genius. He's a musical genius. I get that. Like, he's great. But in the same sense of, like... A fucking fantasy football genius. I don't give a fuck what he says about politics. Like, you know, I don't care about the fucking art genius, what he has to say about politics, because it's not his fucking strong suit. That's what Kanye is. Like, be a musical genius. That's great. We loved you there. 2006, and you're fucking banging out, you know, all these badass songs in 2006 that everyone loved. Let's keep it there, though, Kanye, because it got nothing to do with what's yeah. going on now. Like, and it's stupid wearing the MAGA hat and this is and, and being that. bullied on SNL. Like, right? he came out on SNL saying he was bullied not to um, talk about Adam. Trump and yeah, and this yeah. And, that. and Pete Davidson even said he goes, nobody stopped Kanye from wearing that stupid hat. He was like, well, and then they show him running off when he when Kanye came out with his hat. The SNL guy, I don't know his name. Ariana Grande's ex, Pete Davidson? He ran off the stage and they show him like in the spotlight. You can see him just running out. Because he started he was to... Like, I want a career. <laughs> yeah. Because he wanted... Because uh, cause Kanye West started going off on this like... At once it went off the air, he started doing a rant like on stage mm. in front of the audience. And it was kind of like, what? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Kanye West is really trippy. I think there's something mentally wrong with him. There I is. really hope he gets the help that he, he needs. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know what it is? He is so, he has so much money that he doesn't have to worry about so, you know, normal things so like nor- normal people. We have to worry about day to day stuff. It keeps us grounded. It keeps us level headed because mm-hmm. you, he doesn't have to worry about any of that. And so he can just, his mind can just run with like anything he feels like, which is like, he thinks he has something to do with the Bible and something to do with politics and he would be a saint and this and that. So he could just, he doesn't ever have to pay the bills. He doesn't really, you know, have to take care of a kid, you know, really take care of his kid. You know, he just hires the nanny, the nanny takes care of it, right? Mm-hmm. He can just go off and his mind, you know, that's, it's a polluted mind is what he has. Friggin', um, all I know, the main reason why I was upset is because that Saturday that he was the musical guest on SNL, mm-hmm. he was supposed to drop his new album called Yandi that Saturday night and he didn't fucking drop it. Oh, and really? then Kim Kardashian was like, oh, Kanye's actually going to drop Yandi in November. And I'm like, you motherfucker, I was waiting for new music. I already listened to the shit out of Ye and Kid See Ghost. He dropped two albums in one year. And he's getting ready to drop a third. It's a fucking madman. Oh my god. Madman! I'm still waiting for that. I'm telling you, that conspiracy theory I read earlier in the show, mm-hmm. a long time ago, I still think it's true. I think this is his, like, um, ah, what was it called? It was like the something piece. Um, not a period piece, but it's his, like, um, it's like his artistic breakthrough. Like, this is, like, what he's been leading, like, everything is going to have a payoff. Like oh, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. All you his weirdness. Gonna, okay. Like I, don't, all, I, don't, I don't think that. But I won't know until this <laughs> damn album comes out. Yeah. I need to know. I don't think so. I don't uh, know. Yeah. But I still love Kanye West as a musician. That's fine. <laughs> because, yeah, he's a musician. He's good at that. Sticks what you get at. Yeah. 808s and heartbreaks. Yeah. Um, and It's the same with like, people like Beyonce, right? I think of, I'm like, oh, you can't fucking hate on the girl. Like, she's a good looking girl. She nah, brings out bobs. Well, you don't like black girls, but that's okay. She's a good looking girl. You know, widely accepted as a good looking female. And preference could be different, but honestly, she's as a pretty. white girl, she's a good looking girl. That's what I said. What's the reason pretty? Anyways, and musically, she's got bobs, right? They're good, blah, blah, blah. But who cares? So I actually, I'm okay with her whole, like, stance and this and that. I'm like, yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty liberal as it is. So I'm like, yeah, we should talk about it. There's a lot of people who are like, I don't want to hear Beyonce talk about the police. I don't want to hear Beyonce. And I'm like, fair, fair. Because, yeah, I want to go to her concert and not think. You want to go to her concert and not talk about it. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Same with Kanye on the conservative side now, I guess. You know. Yeah, I've yeah. seen Beyonce in concert. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was my second that concert ever. No, it was cool. It was on her. It was her first solo world tour. She came to town. Uh, she came to the SBC Center, mm-hmm. um, when the AT and T Center had its original name. 
Um, it, she had uh, Missy Elliott and Alicia Keys open up for her, and she brought out Destiny's Child halfway through her set. So that's pretty dope. Yeah, and that was my second concert ever. And so oh, wow. it was a cool. It was her when she had like the so crazy in love, like mm-hmm, that album, mm-hmm. like her first solo album. Yeah, that was her first world tour. I'd love to go see Beyonce. I wish it's a fucking show. I yeah, no, yeah, band. she's a great performer. Yeah, and I was just like, I, don't, I just don't think she's the queen. Like everybody. Praises her to be. To me, I'm like, she has kind of a snitch, you know, and I think within that niche or niche, she's, yeah, whatever. I'm not really, I'm not a black woman or person. Yes, Beyonce. You know what I mean? So I don't really, but I'm like, I feel like it's widely accepted, so I'm okay with it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. I don't really have an opinion on it either way, but. (laughs) Right. Um, And uh, speaking, um, well, going back to Donald Trump. So Stormy Daniels, his alleged mistress, or his confirmed mistress, I should say, yeah. um, porn star, which is very ugly, by the way. Stormy Daniels is rough looking, and um, hey, you know, I, don't, I can't even really think of what she looks like. Cause I, how old is she? She's like she's got to be in her fifties. Yeah, I'm so like she's old. Was she rough? Was she a rough looking porn star when she was doing it? Yeah, I mean, like she's like when apparently like I've seen pictures of when they were together and stuff. She just looks exactly the same. Like she just oh. looks gross. <laughs> Like, oh, she just looks old, even back then. Oh, wow. Um, and a couple times when I watch porn, like, after the whole Stormy Daniels thing, yeah, she, pop, she pops up as an ad for Camster.com. I don't know if you've ever seen those fucking ads. Uh, Come live chat with it's us. It's probably there. I just don't know. Yeah. So she's popped up in I'm an busy. ad, and she was, <laughs> and she, she popped up in an ad while I was waiting for the video to start, and she was topless. Oh, my God. The worst looking set of tits I've ever seen. Really? I was like, Are they fake? Huh? Oh, yeah. They're definitely fake. And they're bad. I was just like, <laughs> this is back in the day, I guess. Really. No, this is here recently. Wow. Um, that she popped up because like she was making like a topical ad, like mm. I'll keep your secrets only if you're not Trump. He he he. Really? And I was just like, what the hell? And it was just so gross. And I was like, why would I was like, oh Donald Trump? But yeah, um, so because she did say that Donald Trump's penis looked like Toad from Mario, um. But apparently, so she was trying to sue Donald Trump for a, like a defamation claim or a defamation lawsuit. So a New York judge threw it out like, yeah, whatever. Like, we're not pursuing this. Soon it gets thrown out, Donald Trump goes like, oh, yeah, Stormy Daniels, that horse face. <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's like, dude, you just got done, you know, about to be sued for defamation. And then you go and insult her even more. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm so done with Trump. Fucking just... bum. Uh, how many, two more years? Uh, two more years. <laughs> to be honest, the trend is, I mean, since, see, here's the thing, is that I'm young, you know, we're young. Mm-hmm. So the president I remember, I don't, the president I remember is Bush Jr. Right. But to be honest, when I was born, it was Clinton. Yeah. And he was in his second term then. And the thing is, since Clinton with a second term, Bush Jr. was president and then he had a second term. Then Obama, he had a second term. So the trend is that all the presidents go eight years. And I think it's because, honestly, they feel like eight years is to get things done. Like, the first four years of the campaign and get things started. The la- the next four years is to kind of follow through. Oh, I hope that's not the case And with there's Trump. people in power that we don't, you know, we're not really in power. It's people up there that are letting... So, like, I'm pretty sure the people that decided Trump was going to be president were ready for an eight-year term. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's already pre-decided. I'm, I really am... And I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works with the presidency. So I'm pretty sure he's going to get the next four years, too. I, I'm hoping that's not the case. The only thing is that with the next four... The last four years of all of them have always turned. See, that's what changes. This flips, right? Last four years of Clinton, the Monica Lewinsky thing, which is so sad because he turned our economy around. He, the Clinton presidency was so good economically, governmentally, you know, for the people... But all you think about Clinton is Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. Which had nothing to do with really, that really helped the masses. He busted a nut. It was just him being a shitty person. You can't forget that, though. He's a shitty person. Bush, too, the first four years um, went to Iraq, right? And then the next four years, he was helping this and that. So everyone's mad about that. Obama, everyone loved Obama. Change, just then the last four years, Obamacare. A lot of poor people were pissed about the payment. So Trump, I'm pretty sure the next four, the last four years, a lot of the conservatives are gonna be against him too, Man. and that's when we'll flip back to a Democrat, you know, a Democratic um, president. So I downloaded another soundboard and I'm trying to use it, but I guess I think it's a fake one because right, 
Nothing. Yeah, it just keeps popping ads up. Boo. I'm getting my iPad age right now. Man. Just like LimeWire. Fucking um, LimeWire. You know, LimeWire wasn't even all that back in the day. What? I don't know a lot of people that use LimeWire. You're young. Did you did you use use uTorrent and all that too? No, I used BMP3. I don't even know. I you know and even at that I didn't I I would when I was going to go <coughs> illegally download songs I would Google the song, you know whatever free MP3 and I just clicked on the first link that ever popped up. Listen to the song. Does it have a good quality? Excellent. Downloaded it, renamed it right there because I see those stupid posts where it's like. Um, it's like the name of the songs were all stupid long and had underscores and dashes. Yeah. I'm like, are you that fucking lazy just to click, to right click it, rename so-and-so by so-and-so? Yeah, we weren't about it. It's like, it's so fucking lazy. LimeWire was fucking up. And FrostWire before there was dope too. But what sucked was that you could download porn at the time and then you download something dope like guy getting his dick sucked by his hot girlfriend in the car and then you fucking find a video of a guy fucking a horse or something and you're like what the fuck and now it's on the computer like that see was, and then that's LimeWire so like Spot, do you use Spotify or like oh, iTunes I love Spotify Spotify okay Spotify is literally like the way LimeWire was but it's refined you know Spotify has it's oh, legit yeah. thing LimeWire was all of us were just throwing you know the world is uploading videos and songs and mp3s and this and that onto one device on mm-hmm. one server or whatever um, and we could all tap into it and we would just look, search, you know, like Spotify, you search for a song, find the song, download, but you never knew what you really got. See, Spotify regulated it. So now you know it's what it is, right? It's See, but why not just go to Google and Google, I that want the song? No, there wasn't that back then. You couldn't yes, do it. Yes, there was. No, there wasn't. Yes, there was. Okay, when I was in seventh grade and I had a USB MP3 player that could only hold like eight songs at a time, and that was cool. That was fucking awesome. You must okay. At seventh grade, you, I wasn't when I you was. You had to be like a fourth or fifth. Grade. I had a you. I had a an MP3 player. Yeah. And I was. Oh, I would just Google the name of the song, with free MP3 at the end. In fourth grade. In fourth grade, because my dad, because I listened to when we would listen to CDs in the car and everything. My dad, because we knew how to rip songs off the of CDs to save them to the computer. You put the CD mm-hmm. and you download the CD to the computer. Yeah. But my dad didn't trust that and didn't want us touching his CDs. So I was always going through, I would go to Google, open Google. I was doing this since like second grade. Where would it, what? No, yeah, no. I, would, I would just Google. What the name site of the came song. up with the song though? The, the main, the most there common one. There was a back then. The most common one was BMP3. That, that was a really cool website, but then that one started crashing a lot. Then there was some, then there was some Russian website. But then I would, but then I'm not a dumbass. I would preview the song, be like, is this the right song? Is this the right track? And I would sur- I would go through tons of results until I found the actual full song and make sure that the quality was perfect. I never touched LimeWire. To be wire. honest, when what, I, Google and LimeWire back in the day for me, never, I mean, they were never the same thing. Google was, I don't, I think for me, I didn't even realize they probably were at the same time open, but. I didn't even use Google. I only use LimeWire, like for a song. I didn't even know Google existed at this time, right? But I wasn't downloading the songs from Google. I would just go to whatever search results popped up when I would Google search, like Fear of the Dark, Iron Maiden, Free MP3. And then whatever sites popped up, I would cycle through every single website to find the full song at a good quality. All I know is that in seventh grade, I had had an icon on my desktop that was called LimeWire that if I wanted to download songs, I went to it, plugged in the song, downloaded it. And that was it. And it seemed like everyone else did that too. With CDs too, right? That's how you No, yeah. It. I was like, I had a lot of people that, that was use LimeWire. That like, was it. I didn't, I mean, going through Google and looking and this, I didn't, and to be honest, the thing was, usually it was right, right? And it wasn't until like, for honest, honestly, like eighth grade when I started getting into like pornography and stuff and started <laughs> using it, I was like, holy shit, you could find more stuff than just music on there. <laughs> um, it's like, oh. And then it was like, holy fuck, getting like weird shit on there. Um, then it started, and then we started doing U torrents, which was also not very good because people, you know, with illegal music downloading, they were like cracking down on that shit too. Um, I don't know. That's just how it was. It was like, cause I remember- <laughs> and everyone else did that way too. I mean, I don't know anyone. So like my cousin, Adam, he, he's always been up on the trend with technology and stuff like that too. And I always just emulated what he did. And so that's what he would do too. So going to... I didn't, I didn't think you could go to Google at the yeah. time. Because even now, I think if you go to Google, 
You can't just download an MP3. You know, I don't think I haven't. Granted, I haven't done that in years. I don't think so because it's you know, it's a lot more regulated now. Yeah. Right? Um, but even then, I don't know. Google was for looking up research, and you know, for a school project or something like. Oh, I don't yeah, know. man. Google was Google was my favorite thing because I could find anything I thought of like on Google. Like there, there was times where like when I was younger, I would just like sit at Google and I would Google random questions that would pop into my head. Well, I remember doing. I'm <laughs> really lucky too, just looking at sites, just mm-hmm. you know. But I never. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when Google really came out though either. When did Google, I wonder if there's a discrepancy there. When did Google come out? Well, actually, to be honest, though, I think I'm think we're getting up on the podcast. Yeah, we can still like, hang out after though. But it was like uh, I was like, yeah, we ran through our quick hits. Now we're just going ahead and rambling. You're right. Uh, so um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I really appreciate the time. I definitely wanted um, definitely wanted the time for uh, teach to prepare for the wedding and everything like that. You know, I really respected that. Um, as much as I could, but I got impatient. And actually, no, he messaged me saying like, "Hey, when are we going to?" So actually, again? I was sitting there last night, and I had just smoked a bowl, right? Like a whole bowl of myself. Oh, I was so you only see about me when you're high. So I was, and I was going to see. So I didn't. I was like in my head, I'm like, "Oh, I'm just gonna like crash the fuck out." And I saw you liked the page, you shared the page, and then you shared another thing about like coming soon. Kind of in my head, my stomach was going. David's talking to me right now. <laughs> I was like, David's letting me know he's ready. So I was like, David, let's meet up. I think we're ready. To, and I was, because I was ready too, though, honestly. I feel so much more, yeah, I, before this, it was like, there's no time. There's no time. There's yeah. no time. Even, I get heat from Mr. Teacher who's like, um, that's like cute and everything, but are you doing this and that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and no, and because at the same time, uh, what was it? Um, because I was like, no, nah, when when teacher's ready, I, I guarantee you he'll message me. Cause, um, I I just didn't want to impose on anything. Mm. Cause I know with weddings, it's already stressful enough. Even though I haven't personally gone through anything yet with the wedding, um, but you know, I can I can only imagine and, and guarantee all the grief that you get from other people. And this and this thing going back to the, when I asked you what was for the dinner, um, mm. cause I was like. I didn't want to be like, uh, like you spend all that money on the food. So, okay. So like you even had, I don't know if we talked about it here but, or before, but the food for you wasn't whatever, right? The, with the cookness, the doneness of it. Yeah. It's like to, the steak, the steak was very runny. But you would not at that day come up to me and say like, um, what else can you do for me? Because I know, yeah. right? It's like, like I not like not like the maid of honor. Yeah, I wouldn't go up to him and be like, "This is unacceptable." Like, right? Give me, give me nuggies right, right now. You know what I mean? Like, no, like I opened it and I was kind of like, because you have filet mignon and you know I opened it up and it was really red. I don't like my yeah. meat that red, but I was I was starving out of my mind. Mm-hmm. I hadn't eaten all day because I was throwing up all morning, and I was like, "Oh, I'm very hungry," and I was like, "I need to eat." And so I was like, I'm going to eat it. Because it's still meat. It's still yeah. beef. It's good. It's just I don't prefer... Honestly, that's how you have to cook filet mignon. Yeah, and honestly, so... keys that got well done, that was bad. <laughs> Should not have been well done. <laughs> so I was just like, I was just like, man. So I ate it. And then I ate the twice baked potato. I was like, oh my god, it was so delicious. Um, and I ate the little bread, even though it was so dry. And mm. so like... That was my only complaint about the food. It was just the roll. It was like a ciabatta, right? I remember that it was, too. Yeah, it was I put weird. butter in it too and I was like, this is dry as fuck. Like, yeah, I was like, uh, that was my only complaint. And I just didn't eat the green beans. I yeah. get the shrimp to somebody else. Because yeah. I'm not going to sit there and be like, dude, what the fuck? Because it's not my wedding. You're you not getting the meal for me. What's up? You didn't give me the shrimp. I didn't give the shrimp. <laughs> um, but yeah. Quit calling it a shrimp. I was like, damn, Leslie. <laughs> um... But yeah, no, it's like, and that's why I asked you ahead of time, because I was like, you know, I'm not going to be rude. I'm going to mm. invite, like, if it's, if they're serving food I don't like, I'm going to eat a bunch of food before I go. You know what I'm mad about is that my dad, when he had his wedding, he had, he did a buffet style and, you know, people, there's less people that come always, like whoever you pay for. And we ha- it's always less people that come that you invite, but you always pay enough for them. And when he went home, he had all this, like a box full of food to take home right because it was just everything left they had cooked it all so i know that there was food cooked and that not enough pe- not everyone came to our wedding too that we paid for we didn't get the extra food though. no and they cooked it though like because i remember when i one of the um girls was allergic to shrimp and so we were like don't put shrimp on her plate right because she's allergic blah 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 
And they were like, oh, well, it's already cooked. Like It's already made. Yeah, everything's already... So I'm like... And at the end of the... The next day, I'm like, so everything was made, and not everyone came. So there was like... I mean, like at least 10 plates there that were cooked. What happened to those? Right, where is them? Because I would have taken them home and, like, ate them. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they probably ate them, right? Whoever, they were there. The so. staff were like, oh. Yeah, it was bullshit, right? Like, they should have given to us. But anyways, I don't know where I went with that. But no, but that was right, so. um, moral of the story. Uh, don't do meth. Like don't guy. do meth. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully I am a lot chiller now on the show. Cause I was really tense with that too. Like I was like, I was oh, so neighbor? stressed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I was in a very bad place with all that. But now that I know like it wasn't him, he wasn't doing stuff intentionally. I'm a lot more at ease with that. So, um, yeah, so we're definitely going to try as best we can to start getting more content out. Um, like I, I have a lot of ideas rolling for like fucking spinoffs or like maybe extra bonus content on the YouTube mm-hmm. page and everything. Um, really kind of making. A- I want an applause one. I'm looking for an applause one. Why don't we? Have, why is it not an applause? I have two of these fucking soundboards and none of them have applause. Because you're not paying for the ad free. I paid thing. for one of them. Oh shit. Yeah. Three dollars. Oh, that's happy. I would $3. say ninety nine dollars. Two ninety nine. And they don't have a fucking... Anyways. But, but, um... As always, we appreciate the love and support you guys give the show. Keep sharing, which you guys don't, because I we get notifications when people share our shit. Yeah, can you share it? Yeah, I was like, please, please share it. Please, for the love of Christ Almighty. Um, please share it. But, as always, thank you guys for the love and those that who religiously listen to us as soon as we post stuff out. So, um... Yeah, as always, I am David Clare. And I'm the Teach. Until next time, you bitches. No, no, don't do it. No, 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 no,